Knoxville, Florida, Ole Miss goes to 2-0. Oh, Florida, 0-1, oh, 24-19, the final. For Tim Foley, I'm Bob Neal. Let's go to Greg Sager now in Atlanta with updates from other college games. Well, thank you, Bob. After two weeks here on TBS, it is the state of Mississippi, too. The Sunshine State, nothing. Congratulations last week to Southern Miss for defeating Florida State. And congratulations today to Old Miss for knocking off the Florida Gators. We'll have highlights and scores from the rest of the country in a moment on the Bud Light Post Game Report. It's an ancient art, practiced today much as it was long ago. Nature's grains, pure water, a small, flavorful flower. Artfully blended. Just an absence of God, particularly with the, the, the drug problem that we'll we keep the sun. When you take a sinus medicine that can make you drowsy, it's like sleepwalking through your day. That's why there's Sudafed Sinus. It relieves sinus pain with a non-aspirin pain reliever and pressure with a decongestant that starts to work in as quick as 22 minutes without drowsiness. So if you don't want to sleepwalk through your day, get Sudafed Sinus. Fast sinus relief that won't put you fast asleep. It's got to go to the right. Wendy's is introducing a new menu. No, a little more to the right. I, I mean left. No, go back to the right. We call it Wendy's Super Value Menu. Everything is at a special low price. No, that, that's close, but it's not right. Delicious food like Biggie drinks, Biggie fries, chili, including our new Junior Bacon Cheeseburger. All at prices that leave change in your pocket. That's perfect. No, it's not. It's got to go back to the left. Wendy, don't you have anything else to do? Come try the Super Value Menu at Wendy's. Today on TBS, there's danger around every corner, but it won't stop their search for gold. Incident at Phantom Hill, 4 p.m. Eastern on TBS today. The following is a presentation of TBS Sports. Home of the 1990 Goodwill Games. The Georgia Bulldogs entered the 1989 battle with questions in every area and few answers available. But four games into the season, Ray Goff's staff has established a beachhead and laid the groundwork for a promising football era. Loaded with talented underclassmen rushed to early duty and a core of veteran trench fighters, the dogs have charged into the SEC wars afraid of no one and eager to discover how good they can be. For Ole Miss, 89 has been a war of attrition. An exciting start has been tempered by a rash of injuries to the defensive unit that has been a rebel cornerstone. But with a potent big play offense as a secret weapon, Oxford, Mississippi is a perfect battleground for the sound and fury of SEC football. Live from Vaught-Hemingway Stadium on the campus of Ole Miss in Oxford, Mississippi, TBS Sports continues its sixth season of SEC football coverage. Today, two teams at the crossroads of their respective seasons meet here in Oxford under sunny skies and warm temperatures. Hello, everybody. Along with Tim Foley, this is Bob Neal in Oxford, Mississippi. Well, these are two teams who both started their seasons very strong, but have now both lost two games in a row. For the Georgia Bulldogs, the big question, their running backs, particularly Rodney Hampton. Arthroscopic surgery last Sunday. Hampton is hoping to play today, believe it or not, only six days after arthroscopic surgery. Also, Ellis, who will be out the fullback, and that running game is a problem for Georgia today, Tim. Yeah, and with Ray Goff, this football team is almost like a first car that he might have owned. You know, you, once you get something fixed, something else falls apart. He's got his offensive front pretty solid, playing well. Now he's lost the guts of his backfield. They're going to come with Cleveland and Ware, but Hampton is a fine, fine athlete. 
Very young defensive football team for Georgia, but their coaches say they've been coming on and have been playing well, but they, too, have some injury problems to deal with. Yeah, they've only allowed 18 points a game. They're moving uh, Goldberg up around, uh, around up front. He's their big man, a sack man, a guy that's a veteran in that football team. They're strong on the outside with Cowens and Lewis. They've got a couple injury situations in the secondary. They're not sure whether Smith and Wilson can play. Now, Ole Miss last week, as we were televising the game from Lexington, Kentucky, we see Ole Miss goes up on Alabama 21 to nothing. Then wham, bam, they lose 62 to 27. Psychologically, how devastating can that be? Has this ever happened to you? But it's never really happened to me in the sense that we've been behind and or been ahead and lost by that much. I don't think it's happened to too many people in history, as a matter of fact. But you know what you got to do is get that behind you. They had some big plays early and things looked good, uh, but almost it was too much too soon. And then uh, the big plays just started going against them. Offensively, they have to prevent the turnovers. They've been giving the ball to the opposition too many times in their own territory they're banged up on defense hopefully some of those defensive backs will be back for Ole Miss well Georgia is favored here in Oxford by about a touchdown today but as we've seen in the SEC this year who's favored doesn't really matter very much it'll be interesting both teams with psychological corners to turn in this game and a lot could happen in the first quarter as to who gets breaks who gets big plays we'll be back here with the opening kickoff at Oxford Mississippi in just a moment but right now let's go back to Atlanta Craig Sager and the insider report Thanks, Bob. And the inside word on college football this week comes from the University of Tennessee, where Johnny Majors has dismissed his star running back, Reggie Cobb, from the team. It is the second time this year that Cobb has been kicked off the team for a drug-related problem, but this time he will not be allowed to return. We'll hear from Johnny Majors and one of Cobb's former teammates in a moment. Milwaukee light. It doesn't get any better than this. When you're a company that makes building products, you get real familiar with trees. Georgia Pacific has known these trees for over 50 years. We planted most of them. You know them as our double-sanded southern gold plywood or our designer paneling. But GP also has products like shingles, nails, gypsum, which don't come from trees at all. So whether the building supplies you need grow on trees or not, Ask for GP. That's all you need to know. Hello, I'm Craig Sager, and this is the Old Milwaukee Insider Report. Tennessee running back Reggie Cobb, the SEC's leading rusher, has been permanently dismissed from the team for his involvement with drugs. I made the decision, and the decision is final. I don't need to discuss that I had any alternatives in my mind or not. The decision has been made. It's final, and that's a private matter that I do not plan to what I discussed or what I thought about. Uh, I feel like I've lost a brother right now. I, it's really hard to say how I do feel. I, I'm just in shock. You know, the news hit me like a ton of bricks today, and uh, I hadn't been able to think about anything but that. And uh, I'm going to have to, you know, sit down and get off my mind and go ahead and get ready to play ball. Despite the league's highest ranking, sixth in CNN USA Today's Top 25, the Vols' path to the Sugar Bowl is filled with lumps. Still ahead, games on the road against Alabama, LSU, and Kentucky, and of course, without Reggie Cobb. This is the first week that both scouts have been allowed to travel. The best bet for the national championship is the Notre Dame-Miami winner against the winner of Colorado-Nebraska in the Orange Bowl, New Year's night. Of the 106 teams in Division I, 11 remain unbeaten and untied. One of the greatest rivalries in college football will be played this afternoon in anonymity. It's Oklahoma and Texas. The Longhorns were 4-7 and seven last year, their worst record in 32 seasons, and the inside word says David McWilliams is on the hot seat. Sit back in your seat because coming up next, the opening kickoff of Georgia and Old Miss. Old Milwaukee Insider Report has been brought to you by Old Milwaukee Beer and Old Milwaukee Light, two of America's great-tasting beers. It doesn't get any better than this. I always carry my Lanier pocket protege so I can record my ideas anywhere because I get some of my best ideas in showers. Call 1-800-241-1706.
Two foursomes can use Lanier's new digital dictation system, so you can save your company over $15,000 a year in executive time. That's a lot of golf balls. But it doesn't cost a lot of golf balls. You're looking sharp. You're looking good. You've come so far. And we know how to make the most of who you are. Father to son. It's what we've always done. Gillette. The Gillette Atra Plus system and Gillette Foamy Shave Cream together. The best a man can get. The best a man can get. Tonight on TBS, when a town goes bad. Well, we got us a problem. <laughs> Big problem. He was hired to bring back justice. Nobody's taking over this town. But when he tries to take control... I'm gonna kill you. The town fights back. I'm the one that brought you here. And I'm the one that's gonna run you out. Chris Christopherson, Jan Michael Vincent, and Victoria Principal. Vigilante Force. 805 Eastern on TBS, tonight. Portions of today's game are brought to you by Infinity, a new concept in luxury cars. Infinity. It doesn't get any better than this. By Valvoline Motor Oil, people who know use Valvoline. By Georgia Pacific Building Products, with superior performance built in. And by Gatorade Thirst Quencher. Gatorade is thirst aid for that deep down body thirst. Bob Neal and Tim Foley with you from Vaught Hemingway Stadium on the campus of Ole Miss in Oxford. It is actually going to be up to about 80 degrees at kickoff time. The temperature climbing very rapidly. It says 74 there, but it's about 80 already since we even printed that on the screen for you. Heat could be a factor in this, day, in this uh, game today as the winds are very mild, about five miles from the southeast. Georgia 2-2 two two on the season. Ole Miss 3-2 on the season. Georgia coached by Ray Goff in his first year as head coach of Georgia. The last time Ole Miss won against Georgia here at Oxford, it was back in 76, and Ray Goff was the quarterback. Georgia won the toss, will defer, and Ole Miss, as you can see, about to receive. Back deep, 33, Tyrone Ashley, and number three, Pat Coleman. John Casey about to kick off for the University of Georgia Bulldogs. And this game is underway from Oxford. Coleman will down it in the end zone, and John Darnell will lead out the Ole Miss Rebels. They've lost two in a row. Darnell, however, six touchdown passes on the season. He has also thrown five interceptions. Darnell's a senior from Currents, Mississippi, and Randy Baldwin is a running back who can become the main man for Ole Miss if they can get him up to 25 or 30 carries a game. An Ole Miss offensive line, Dawson Pruitt is the leader up front, and that's the diehard offensive lineup for you to begin this game. From the 20, first down 10. There's Baldwin, about three and a half off the right side. He was tripped up by Matt McCormick, starting at the inside linebacker position in place of Kurt Douglas today. And speaking of that Georgia defensive alignment, let's take a look at it. Bill Goldberg, he's having an outstanding season since been moved from nose guard to the outside. Demetrius Douglas playing well, too. Probably the leader there, though, is Mo Lewis. And Mike Jones is a man under a lot of pressure today because senior free safety Ben Smith has a hamstring and will be playing hurt much of the day. On the pass, 
A first down to the 31-yard line. Ed Thigpen catches the Darnell toss. McCormick with his second tackle of the day and a gain of eight yards. You know, you talked about Bill Goldberg, Bob, and they have moved him to the outside, got a little bit more flexibility. You see him working here now, number 95, trying to scoot by. He's going for an arm over, and they end up with a little bit of fisticuffs there. Actually, uh, but that's standard procedure for those big fellas. You call it arm over, I call it right cross, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Swinging the ball there. Here comes Randy Baldwin to about the 32, gain of only about a yard on the play. Baldwin, a sophomore from Griffin, Georgia, Baldwin came out of junior college to Ole Miss, had been originally signed by Georgia Tech. And there's Ray Goff, two and two. Won the first two, lost the second two, but Ray Goff knows what we know. In Vince Dooley's first year at Georgia, Dooley went two, two, and one in his first five games. And I'm not sure that'll make Ray feel any better about this time. He knows he's got to get a, another win under his belt pretty soon. On the second down, Darnell is in trouble. Did not get back to the line of scrimmage a lot of the yard or so. Mo Lewis was there, as was 95, Bill Goldberg. And Goldberg has really come around his senior year, Bob. The first couple of years, he was playing well, but as a nose man, double teamed a lot, and uh, Richard Bell slid him to the outside. Steve Greer has worked with him out there. He's getting up field and just pursuing the quarterback, staying after the quarterback. He had a great offseason of work, and he knows this is it for him. He's got to show his stuff. This is third down 10, the ball near the 30-yard line. Opening moments from Oxford, Mississippi. Darnell rolling the throw. It is complete. To the 50-yard line, Willie Green, a native of Athens, Georgia, makes the catch, the Ole Miss senior. That's his 16th reception on the season. And this is the 31st game in a row that Willie Green has caught a pass. He's got good speed. And he's an intelligent receiver at finding the opening there as Wynn puts it on him. Georgia that time came with a uh, safety blitz. First down 10 from midfield. Ole Miss started at their 20 after Casey kicked it off into the end zone. Ole Miss has driven at 30 yards already. Remember last week Ole Miss got ahead of Alabama 21 to nothing before losing. Darnell on the option keeps it for about a yard inside Georgia territory. Nose guard Robert Bell, number 94, with a stop for the Bulldogs. Last week was as strange a game as you'll ever see or hear about. Ole Miss scored after two plays. After an interception by Chris Mitchell. And there was a block punt. Two plays later, they're in the end zone again. And then they had a nice drive, a nice drive, third and seven. They scored again, 21 to nothing. Incredible. Second down nine from the 49. Darnell with some play instructions at the line. Quick toss. Tried to get it to number five, Reed Hines. He saw something in that Georgia defense and wanted to take advantage of it. Incomplete. And John Darnell, a good athlete, and as Billy Brewer would say, doesn't leave a vapor trail behind the ball when he throws it, but he gets it there, and he played very well against uh, against Arkansas, and at times showed some flashes of brilliance against Alabama. A conversion situation for the Rebels at the Georgia 48 and a half, third down nine. Incomplete penalty marker is down. Number two is true freshman Al Jackson. And he made a freshman mistake there, bumping Willie Green before the ball got there. So we have David Hargett. That's the defense. There's the call interference. George Wynn, David Hargett, Mike Jones, and Chris Wilson in the ballgame. Darnell back to throw. Westmoreland is wide open down the middle. Goes to the option route over here. And they uh, flag Al Jackson for interference. Al Jackson got his first action as a true freshman. One of 11 who will probably play in this game today in our Baylor telecast and had a fumble recovery in that ball game. And they're working him in slowly at a cornerback spot. First down 10 from the 39, thanks to the penalty, and Ole Miss keeps the drive alive. Play fake to Thigpen, Darnell throwing over the middle, wide open, Willie Green. Nice cut to the 25. 
goes to the 20. Green stepped out of bounds at the 13-yard line. Willie Green to the 13, a gain of 26. And Ole Miss moving the football on the Georgia defense. I think Georgia having to play people before they're, they actually want to play them. At the corner, Jackson, at the safety, Jones. A little play action here in the middle of this double zone opens up. Mo Lewis overran it. Win overran it. Good block by uh, Gibbia there, cutting him down. And finally, hustle over and knock Green out of bounds. But Ole Miss looking sharp. First and ten at the 13-yard line. Off the left side goes Jim Earl Thomas. Right around the 10-yard line. I think Ray Goff's main concern coming into this football game, as any head coach's concern, would be after playing in Tennessee. you got 98,000 screaming maniacs. You're playing one of the top teams in the country. Excitement. There's a buzz in the stadium. You're cranked up, ready to go. You come up with a great effort. Although you fall short, now you have to come and play a team in front of 40,000 people. And you saw them on film last week. They didn't look very good. So... A tough game to get ready for for Georgia. Second down, seven. Ole Miss from the 10. Ninth play of this drive. Darnell on the option. Breaks a tackle. Drives to about the seven. Good penetration by Georgia defensively. Mike Jones made the stop. Darnell made a nice move to get past it. The missed tackle was Matt McCormick, the linebacker, who had stepped in there. Darnell, three out of four for 53 yards today. He's thrown for nearly a thousand yards coming into this ball game a senior from Corinth Mississippi third down four at the seven 10 15 to go first quarter scoreless game Ole Miss has driven it from the 20 to about the two yard line goes Ed Thigpen the fullback Douglas making the stop if you follow Old Miss you know that in third and Five, six, seven, down in this goal line area. They like to run the football. We saw them run draw against, Al really a quick trap against Alabama last year and score. They did the same thing to Alabama this year. Third and seven from the seven, got a touchdown. First and goal at the one. Full house backfield. Baldwin, Swetzel, and Thigpen are in there. Darnell pitches to Thigpen, then leads the way for the blocking, but the Georgia defense stops him for no gain. Cowens was there. Darnell pitched it to his fullback and then jumped out in front to block, but to no avail. Let's watch the old Miss line work up front. And they're doing a the job on this drive, making good decisions. See Everett, Lindsay, number 64, Struthers, 71. Number 74, Monty Perry. Boom. Coached by Joe Wickline, a former Gator. And uh, has done a fine job with this old Miss offensive line. Second down goal from the one. Baldwin. Touchdown, Ole Miss. Randy Baldwin scores his fifth touchdown of the year. He's rushed for one previously and caught four touchdown passes. So Baldwin continues to be productive. Baldwin showed great elusiveness last week against Alabama early in the football game also. Bold with a point after, it's 7 to nothing. Ole Miss with 9.08 to go in the first quarter. This was an 80-yard drive by Ole Miss, assisted by an interference call against Georgia. Uh, from the days of the gilded coach, the concept of luxury in a luxury car has suggested costly indulgence and um, material abundance but in japan centuries ago and and today still where true luxury is a spare natural idea and beauty a close personal experience there is a different concept of luxury infinity the lights on these cars are running on battery power alone. And in the end, only one, a car with a new die-hard battery, our most powerful ever, is able to start. Great low prices every day, die-hard power. That's your money's worth and a whole lot more. Monday, beautiful, yet strange. There will be no stopping her. She's on a hunt. There ain't gonna be no kill. A manhunt. Jack Nicholson, the shooting, following Perry Mason. 105 Eastern on TBS, Monday. 
Well, Ole Miss has scored an 80-yard drive with 9.08 to go, and it was 80 yards aided by that interference call. And old, the Ole Miss off offense is very proficient if they don't shoot themselves in the foot. That's been the problem this year. Here, Darnell puts the ball on the mark. Interference call on that was the young Al Jackson. Al Jackson, and, right. And uh, then they had the play action pass to Green later on to get him down to the 20, but a nice, well-coordinated drive, running and passing the ball by Ole Miss. Red Parker's got to be happy about that. Brian Lee set to kick it off for Ole Miss. Marshall and McCoy are back. This is going to come down to Rodney McCoy and out to the 31-yard line. And there's the big question mark. Rodney Hampton, arthroscopic surgery last Sunday, is not starting, but he is here and hopes to play today. That means Larry Ware will start at tailback with Brian Cleveland at fullback today. We probably will see Hampton in the game. There's the rest of the skilled position players. Other offensive linemen always remind me that they're pretty skilled, too, if they're good. Here's Tally on first down. Going deep. That's Marshall. He can't get to it down around the 30-yard line of Ole Miss, covered by Don Price. Fine coverage by Price. He's in good shape all the way. We've got a pulled hamstring. They're testing him out early, as you see the front three there for Ole Miss. And most likely, you're going to see four down linemen. Of course, Sean Cobb, the, the strength of those middle linebackers. And Jeff Carter is replacing Todd Sandroni. And Jeff had a tough time last week against Alabama. Second down, 10 from the 32-yard line. On the roll, Tally. Going to be hit right at the line of scrimmage. Philip Kent made the stop. Tally couldn't find anybody. Tally's a sophomore. He's thrown for two touchdown passes, three interceptions on the year. But without Hampton, I'm sure that Georgia will try to develop more of an aerial attack against this old Miss defense, especially after last week when they looked so vulnerable. So, one yard on that scramble by Tally, an incomplete pass. This is third and nine for the Georgia Bulldogs, trailing seven and nothing. It's Ware and Mosin on the backfield, Tally. Completes it to Kirk Warner, the tight end, and he goes out of bounds after getting close to the first down marker. Pete Harris knocked him out. From my perspective here, it looks like he got the first down. Greg Talley just knows how to win. Raised in that program down in Valdosta. He's got good leadership skills. Finds Kurt Warner open across the middle Harris knocks him out of bounds first down and an important first down for Georgia they need to get their feet on the ground eight minutes 14 seconds to go quarter number one on the first down from the 43 where off the right side some running room near midfield to about the eight yard line goes sophomore Larry Ware where is from Montgomery, Alabama, 5'9", 175, playing for the injured Rodney Hampton, only six days away from arthroscopic surgery. Hampton is here in Oxford today, as we showed you, and will probably play in the game if he can go, but that's really something coming back for a running back six days after arthroscopic surgery on his knee. Second down, five, Georgia. Swing out to where? Ware drives to the 42-yard line for the first down. Gain of 11, and let's go to Craig Sager in Atlanta. Thanks, Bob. Six penalties and a fumble have proved costly to the Pitt Panthers, who trail Navy 7-0. Navy quarterback Alton Grizzard to Jerry Dawson. Navy leading by a touchdown. Remember, Navy lost earlier this year to the Citadel, but they're on top of Pitt. Let's go back to Bob and Tim. The first down from the Ole Miss 41-yard line. Ole Miss leading 7-0. Georgia on the drive now. Where? Around the right side, near the 35-yard line. Sean Cobb making the stop for Ole Miss. That time, Georgia lined up and split backs, and they run the toss. And that's something that's unusual. Usually, you see split backs, and that they've got those backs out there so they can pick up outside linebackers, get, get the running backs into a pattern faster. And so a little... A little curveball thrown by uh, George uh, Hafner and Ray Goff at the Ole Miss defense. Second down, four from the 35. 6.46 to go, first quarter. Out of the eye. Hand off to the fullback. 
to the 28-yard line goes Brian Cleveland. Brian's really kind of a swing man today with Hampton's knee injury. He'll be playing a tailback and fullback, the junior from Orange, Texas. You can see Georgia trailing here, and Georgia's been having trouble at the beginning of the game. Remember, they had the problem against South Carolina? Came back, finally took the lead in that game before eventually losing it. But both these teams offensively, Bob, have been bothered by turnovers. That's what's hurt them the worst. Kirk Warner comes in motion from the tight end spot. Hand off to the fullback. And Brian Cleveland drives down near the 25-yard line. Kelvin Pritchett makes the stop for Ole Miss. Okay, let's take a look at uh, Alligator Mississippi's favorite son, Tony Bennett. But we've seen him play great football. They have him playing down now, an outside linebacker, but in the down position. In the uh, you know, 6'2", 240, great leadership ability, good feet. Uh, three sacks he can he, you got to be aware of where he, mr. alligator is and if you're one of his teammates and live in the dorm with him you have to be aware of where his boa constrictor is we'll <laughs> tell you about that when we come back to oxford mississippi you finally reach that great hidden beach it doesn't get any better the heat of the day ooh, the cool of the spray it doesn't get any better than own Milwaukee light. It doesn't get any better than this. There's a motor oil that says it's engineered for today's smaller cars, like sports cars. But is that motor oil the first choice of the members of the Sports Car Club of America? No. Valvoline is the first choice of the members of the Sports Car Club of America. Valvoline makes the highest quality motor oil recommended by any automobile manufacturer. People who know, use Valvoline. Okay. Well, well, we said that we would finish the story on Tony Bennett, and we uh, will now fill you in what we mean about that boa constrictor. Yeah, Tony has a boa constrictor and um, leaves it around the dorm and then it goes around and scare people and create a little a rockets around the dorm and a, a little fun also. Sometimes we just let the snake run around and watch him chase mice and, and uh, it's pretty fun. <laughs> yeah, you know, a little boa constrictor. Who? Look at this thing. You know, that, would that bother you? Wake up in the morning? How you doing, honey? <laughs> no problem. Tally tries to get in there to Brian Cleveland on second down. It'll be third down, seven coming up. All right, I think I'm back. Thank you, Tim. Welcome back, Bob. Lost the uh, microphone there momentarily, but now it's back. Boy, that's um, that's like a pilot losing his wings, you know? <laughs> Whoa. Wow. And I'm in the plane. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now we're back and in fine shape. 5.39 to go first quarter. Third down, seven, Georgia. On the drive at the 26 of Ole Miss. Larry Ware. Drives to the 20-yard line out of bounds. Tony Bennett making the stop. They got a beautiful field here. They've got that pre prescription athletic turf, so it's a natural, natural turf. But uh, sometimes these stripes are a little bit hard to see from the press box. So it's going to be fourth down here. Fourth and one. And they'll go for the field goal. Casey, 10 out of 11 on the year. Having an exceptional year. Three out of four from this distance. And Casey misses it. So he had been on a real streak since missing his opener against Baylor. Casey had kicked successfully 10 straight field goals before that miss. Today on TBS, 
there's danger around every corner, but it won't stop their search for gold. Incident at Phantom Hill, 4 p.m. Eastern on TBS today. We fit America like we never did before. One reason Fruit of the Loom products fit America is that they're made in America. Underwear, socks, activewear, made by 22,000 skilled American workers like Leela Nessel. All of us committed to bringing you lasting quality and value. And that's an unconditional guarantee. We fit America. And we're proud of it. This week on World Championship Wrestling, Nature Boy Ric Flair and Sting make a crucial announcement regarding their Thunderdome match at Halloween Havoc 89. Also, fantastic Bobby Fulton challenges the great Muta. World Championship Wrestling. 5.45 Eastern on TBS today. So Georgia moves the ball all the way down for a field goal attempt that goes awry. Comes away with nothing. A 37-yard attempt by Casey was no good, and Ole Miss continues to lead 7 to nothing. 5.29 to go in the first quarter. Ole Miss started that first 80-yard drive for the touchdown here. Let's see how they do on this attempt. Try to run it on the first play over on the left side goes Jim Earl Thomas. About two yards. All along, all year long, Bob, Old Miss's offense has been kind of hot and cold. It's been big play oriented. They've come up with the good plays. They've got the potential on that offense, but that last drive, that 80 yard drive and combination of running passes, as good as I've seen all year from Old Miss. Second down nine from the 21. Darnell. He's three out of four today. Make it four out of five. Willie Green to the 41 yard line of Ole Miss. That was a gain of 20 yards, and Willie Green is active today. That's his third catch for a total of 65 yards. Already the native of Athens, Georgia. Let's watch Willie Green here, and you're going to see number 53, Demetrius Douglas, is going to chase somebody up front. See, he leaves his area, opens it up for Willie Green. Darnell finds it, pops it in there as Green goes down. Darnell has passed the 1,000-yard mark passing now in this season. On the first down, over the middle. Wide open, and the juggling catch successfully made by Tyrone Ashley. He is down to the 28-yard line, a gain of 31. He not only entertained you with his running, but his juggling. The draw fakes hold the linebackers. They don't get good depth, and Mike Jones falls down. I don't know if we can pick him up in the picture, but just out of your picture to the right is Mike Jones on the ground. And, uh, just tripped as he made his break. Darnell, 104 yards in the air today already. This is the first quarter. He's five out of six. The play fake, the option. And just a couple of yards around to the left side. He pitched that to Tyrone Ashley. And Ashley's from my neck of the woods down there. I guess T. Thomas assistant here at uh, Ole Miss recruits that area. And Tyrone Ashley's from Hialeah, Florida. Went to Hialeah High School, which is right down the street. This doesn't look quite like Hialeah around here. Though. You notice 33, Tyrone Ashley plays wide receiver. He's lined up in this game in the backfield. He came here as Ole Miss as a running back. Darnell pumps, gets a couple of yards. There wasn't really much there near the 20-yard line. Al Jackson, the freshman, came up to make the stop for the Georgia Bulldogs. Ole Miss leads in this game 7-0 on an 80-yard touchdown drive. 3.18 to go in the first quarter. Georgia drove it 80 yards, but then couldn't score when Casey missed a 37-yard field goal attempt on a fourth down one. And Billy Brewer knows his team isn't as bad as they played in the last three quarters last week. It was just one of those things, downhill slide, and nobody could grab a tree as they slid off the edge of the mountain. Ole Miss, three out of three on third down conversions today. This is third down three. Here comes Ashley. He gets the first down. Ole Miss, four out of four on converting third downs. That's the key to these two long drives. So Ashley comes in and picks up some yardage in relief of starter Randy Baldwin. At the 17-yard line now, first down Ole Miss. 
And the left tackle, Lee Ott, moved. Number 62 over on the left side for Ole Miss, and the penalty markers go down. And Lee Ott's a swing tackle. He can play both sides for foul. Joe Wickline's offensive line. Foul. That's the right side of your picture there, number 62. Number 50 gets a little nudge. He <laughs> gives a little inkle there. That's and, Jim uh, Brown. Yeah. So move it back five yards to the 22-yard line. First down 15 at the 22 now. Ole Miss. Darnell short cut. Tosses it up to Willie Green. What a great catch, but it's incomplete. He dropped it when he hit the turf. At about the two-yard line, leaping over Mike Jones and George Wynn, Green could not hold on. So one of the liabilities of having a defensive back that's 5'8", George Wynn is a competitor, but he's not very long. And Willie Green really gets up in the air. He's made some, we've seen him make some acrobatic catches in his career, and he almost comes down with this one. Looks like he's got it away, but look at old little George Wynn. Hustling away, digging away, and finally yanks it out. Second down, 15 from the 22. They give it to Ashley, tries right over the middle, and gets inside the 20 down to about the 18-yard line. That time they were hoping to catch Georgia in a blitz. Try to get that quick crack, the quick pop, and boom, get into the end zone. Running the football. Darnell with the play from the sideline. It'll be third down and 12 at the 19-yard line, and Georgia sends in the nickel back now. Five defensive backs in the ballgame for the Bulldogs. This is the ninth play for Ole Miss on this drive. Baldwin and Thigpen now in the backfield for Ole Miss. Baldwin 24, Thigpen number 32. On third down 12, Darnell in trouble, throws anyway. It is incomplete at the five-yard line. Number 80, Dan Westmoreland, bumped into the Georgia defender. No penalty marker, though, as they were just both going for position there. Quarterback pressure by Mo Lewis, and Darnell just had to get rid of it. When you're playing against Georgia, you better be aware of where Mo Lewis is and Norm Cowens, because they can both get there in a hurry. Brian Lee in for the field goal attempt. He has been inconsistent this year. He is an 18-year-old freshman. Greg Hogue, the number 25, is the holder. 36-yard attempt, hit it hard, and perfectly. The field goal is good, and Ole Miss's lead builds to 10 to nothing. With a minute, 26 seconds to go, quarter number one. The mental demands on you are very, very severe. Just automatically, you get off the edge and you get a headache, and uh, there's nothing you can do about it. It just happens. That's the reason we always keep some goodies handy. Because Goodies gets rid of a headache in a hurry. When you work for a living, there are times when you really need that. You know, it's not just a car, it's an expression of the culture, um, an aesthetic that is connected somehow to nature. A way of saying, this is what we can do if we work at the highest level of our ability and at our full potential. That's the level of the commitment behind a new line of luxury cars from Japan. Infinity. Well, Georgia and Ole Miss have only played in Oxford six times previously, but there have been some memorable games here. In 1975 and 76, the highly rated dogs with Ray Goff at quarterback met with defeat on the Rebels' home turf. In 1975, the Rebels were 1-4 and four entering the contest, but sparked by that James Story TD run, one going away. Then, in 1981, came one of the shortest but most memorable of Herschel Walker's TD runs. Soaring like Superman, landing on his feet, he scored on a play that broke the Rebels' back that day. And 10 to nothing here in Oxford. In 1989, with Ray Goff coaching on the sideline, he's going to think this is uh, a, a bad kind of deja vu. The kickoff gets out of bounds, so there'll be a five-yard penalty. Minute 26 to go in the first quarter. It was 80 degrees at kickoff and expected to get even a little warmer than that. 
and uh, even though it is natural prescription athletic turf down there and, and a very very well conditioned football field here he could play a factor in the game with neither team with a great deal of depth Tim. exactly and as you mentioned Baldwin not playing in that last series they're getting Ashley in there as Ray Goff looks on he was discussing his uh, game in 1976 he said you know, in that game, he was two for two, which is probably the most passes he threw all year. And uh, after the first quarter, he had 99 yards rushing, and he ended the day with 95 yards. They just shut the door on him in the first quarter. After the first quarter. Now the deep backs for the Georgia Bulldogs, Marshall and McCoy. Marshall is 12, McCoy is 29. They'll move it back after the five-yard penalty. And Lee will kick off from the 30-yard line. It's a very short kick. It's going to come down to Kirk Warner at the 29. And Warner right up the middle. And out of bounds at the 33-yard line. Make it the 31-yard line. Kirk Warner, the up-back tight end on the kickoff team, took the short high kickoff and returned it 40 yards. And the Bulldogs are right back down knocking at the door. Warner steps back, makes the catch, trying to keep the ball away from the speedster Marshall. Good job of blocking up front by the Georgia kickoff return team. Warner almost breaks it. As you mentioned, Bob, now on the 31-yard line, they're knocking on the door. Minute 17 to go in the first quarter. It is Cleveland and Max Strong in the backfield for Georgia. Max Strong, a true freshman. Cleveland now at tailback. The play fake and tally. Plenty of time. Gets it to Cleveland. Breaks a tackle. To the 22-yard line goes Brian Cleveland after the catch and run. Reggie Parrott makes the tackle for Ole Miss. Good protection by the Georgia front wall. Gave Talley the time. He wanted the, the receiver crossing Kevin Maxwell. It wasn't there. Then he looked for Hummings. Not there. Finally, he got it to Cleveland, but you have to have time to do that. Good coverage by Ole Miss, but finally Talley picked out the open receiver. Ole Miss leading 10 to nothing. Closing seconds of the first quarter, but Georgia driving inside the 20 to about the 19 on a second down and two. And that will be a first down for Georgia. Tony Bennett stopped Brian Cleveland. And Georgia playing with two true freshmen in the secondary. Uh, just an inexperienced secondary, and John Darnell, is, if he keeps it up, is going to have a great afternoon. Got to get some pressure on the quarterback and make some plays on defense. Georgia got down here before, had to go for the field goal, and missed it, and that's why they trail 10-0. Darnell diving grab at the two-yard line by Kevin Maxwell. First down and goal, Bulldogs, a gain of 18. Sally rolling to his left. Maxwell running a deep out pattern. Takes it inside. Sally patiently waits till he comes open, and then pow, lets him have it. Jeff Carter there on the coverage. Fine, fine catch. Watch this catch by Kevin Maxwell. Good extension. Can't really see it there. Chris Mitchell blocks your view, but a fine catch by the young sophomore. From Rome, Georgia. And they'll have to take a long walk now. That's the end of the first quarter. Ole Miss leads 10-0, but the Bulldogs are first and goal from the two. you need fluids and minerals fast energy for hard-working muscles nothing better give me some of that Gatorade I never thought I'd write to a car company thanking them for the way they built a car but here it is considering the potential for harm when a car and semi collide we were lucky to walk away. I've been thrilled with my Volvo. Now, I'm thankful. All we lost was our $250 deductible. We could have lost a lot more. Can your car company offer these incredible savings? Volvo, a car you can believe in. Portions of today's game are brought to you by Howard Johnson, where the road warrior gets ready for the road.
We've seen some great action this season on the SEA, SEC, and TBS Sports will continue its coverage in two weeks. Check your local listings for details. The action begins at 1 Eastern, 12 Central, on your home of SEC football. At 1 o'clock in two weeks is a special time. Please, no first and goal from the two, Georgia. After the 18-yard pass from Tally to Maxwell. Marshall in motion. Cleveland, airborne. Touchdown, Georgia. Body landed short of the runway for a moment. But the official says no, it was in for the touchdown. He really cranks it up, goes up over the top. We got Mitchell moving in motion. Sean Cobb comes up, tries to close it, but he's up and over. The officials were a little bit late to getting their hands up. I'm not the... Uh, but they finally got him up there, and it's a touchdown for Georgia. 10-6, Casey with the point after. It is good. We have a 10-7 ball game at the opening play of the second quarter. 10-7 Ole Miss. So Georgia with a successful drive. And going to the air, Tally is now 4-6 of six for 47 yards. And the big catch, that 18-yarder by Maxwell down near the goal line. And a good return by Kurt Warner and the kickoff got him in position on the 31-yard line. Again, special teams plays a part in the game. Just like last week, the Ole Miss blocks a punt and uh, turns that into a score in, uh, against Alabama. And in that same game, Alabama ran a fake field goal and scored. So folks usually overlook the special teams until they all of a sudden come up with a big play, but it's 25% uh, it's of the action. You have to spend a lot of time on that. You see Look at the this. details from last week. Remember now, Ole Miss got up here 10 to nothing last week. They were ahead of Alabama 21 to nothing in the first quarter and then ended up losing the game by a score of 62 to 27. And Ole Miss committed seven turnovers in that ball game. That was, I think, since 1930. In 1930, Alabama scored 60 on Ole Miss. So it's been a while since they gave up that many points. And they have been tough defensively since we've been doing this for the last seven years. At about the two yard line. Takes it way out to the right side. Needs a block. Finds the lane. Ashley gets to the 32 yard line. Penalty markers are down. His return yardage about 30, but he ran 50 yards from one side to the other. So 80 yards of running, a 30 yard forward advance of the ball. There may be more coming, though. There's a penalty marker on the field. Opening moments of the second quarter from Oxford, Mississippi. Ole Miss leading it by a score of 10 to 7. Penalty marker came after the play. Clipping is the call, and it's against Ole Miss. Nullifying a pretty good kickoff return by Tyrone Ashley. Penalty looked like it occurred right at the end of the play, Bob, as we check the scoring drive. Warner's kickoff return sets up a four-play drive and in a minute 21 they're in the end zone. So Ole Miss has started their two previous drives at the 20. This one first and 10 from the 16. Ronnie McKinney 36 in at tailback. Darnell continues to go to the air out to the 23 and McKinney makes the grab. Demetrius Douglas with the tackle. McKinney is a junior from Magnolia, Mississippi. Had only one reception prior to that play. Some scores from around the country today. We'll keep you posted all afternoon of college action. Georgia Tech at Clemson. Tech getting their first ACC win last week. Florida State rolling big in the second quarter over Virginia Tech. I think they've got it on track again. Well, Bobby Bowden told you and I prior to that loss against Southern Miss that we televised that he knew this team would get very good by the end of the year but thought it would be a bumpy road to get there. And he was right. They lost their first two. Darnell on the option. Out to the 27-yard line, Mo Lewis with a stop for the Bulldogs. Well, I think one of the things that Ole Miss talked about during practice this week was hanging on to the football. They had, a, they had a, a stretch in the Alabama game where the defense would hardly get off the field. They, after the block field goal, they, had, they ran one play and fumbled, then they came back in, ran another play and fumbled, and they came back in, ran two plays and fumbled, and in... Uh, and there's nothing that you can point to. There's no real specific reason that something happens like that, but I guarantee you the coach has tried to focus the attention of the young men that are going to be carrying that football on, hanging on to it, protect the football. 
you know, they've had 15 turnovers in their own territory. That's just given the other team too much of an advantage. They've played well so far today, though. First and 10 by inches, as you saw, from the 27, Darnell. Right over the middle again. It is complete again to Willie Green. He gets outside, he has blazing speed. Can George Wynn catch him out of bounds? At the 28-yard line, George Wynn was the man who got him out of there, but it was a 45-yard gain, and Darnell has gone to the air. Green with 110 yards in catching, Tally with 154 yards throwing. This time just straight drop back, linebackers dropping in depth. Demetrius Douglas there. But there's a miss by Jones. He picks off Douglas and then a fine job of running by Green getting to the open area. Mississippi players hustling to get back into the play to help with a block. Touchdown saving tackle, George Wynn. Well, Green having a career early in this ball game today. First and 10 at the Georgia 28-yard line. Darnell completes this one to the 21-yard line. That goes to Ronnie McKinney, number 36, the tailback. There have been three tailbacks in this game already for Ole Miss, Baldwin and McKinney and Jerome Ashley. Whether it's George Hafner for Georgia or Red Parker for Ole Miss, one of the toughest things that an offensive coordinator, quarterback coach has to teach his quarterback is to be patient. Take what they're giving you. If they're going to give you the five-yard dump, don't try to force it in 15 yards deep. And that's what Darnell's doing right now. It's second down three now. At the 21 of Georgia, Ole Miss leading 10-7. Baldwin gets to about the 19-yard line. Al Jackson with a stop for Georgia. Jason dialed in late. Ole Miss got out to a 10 to nothing lead. Rodney Hampton has not started in this ball game for Georgia. He had arthroscopic surgery. Now you see Red Parker, 23 years of experience as a head coach at the Citadel, at Clemson, at Delta State. Been an asset for Billy Brewer. Third down two. Full house backfield. Darnell will keep it and dive forward very close to the first down. He has to get to the 18-yard line, and the mark will be everything on this play. They may have to bring that stick in here because it's very close, and the chain is on the far side of the football field. Two close measurements in this drive. Ole Miss got the first down on the last measurement. They may not bring it in. Is that what we're seeing here? That's right. It is fourth down. Less than a yard. Ole Miss is going to go for it, and the crowd getting into it. Ole Miss is five out of seven on fourth down conversions this year. Baldwin wants to go wide. Oh, it's so close. Set him in the backfield, but almost didn't count. Baldwin broke free and died close to the marker. That's a play that was not designed to go out there, Bob, but a great job by the Georgia defense, Bill Goldberg, in particularly forcing that play into a sweep. Actually, it was designed to go off tackle. Ended up in a sweep. Georgia stops him. Big play. I'm Bill Farley, and I don't just run through the loom. I really run and work out and sometimes even relax so i know what you need in active wear and fruit of the loom active wear gives it to you i made sure of it our full cut t-shirts can really take it our comfortable sweats move right with you in colors that fit your style quality active wear one more way we fit america we are every volvo is equipped with energy absorbing front and rear crumple zones rigid steel bars to protect you from side intrusion and a steel safety cage for all-around protection which is something you should think about seriously on a ride in the real world Ole Miss leads 10-7. Georgia stopped him on fourth down and took over position. 
possession of the football. This week's Fruit of Loom classroom champion is Mississippi's Tommy Alfano, a junior from San Antonio, Texas, one of the leaders on the Ole Miss tennis team. His GPA, 3.69. His major is biomedical science. Tommy Alfano, Fruit of the Looms classroom champion for lasting quality and value. They fit America. And Georgia has a new quarterback in there, redshirt freshman Preston Jones, 6'3", 220 from Anderson, South Carolina. He appeared in the second and fourth quarter versus Tennessee, threw a touchdown pass in that game. He opens up here by handing it off to Max Strong. Tally out of there at the moment, and Preston Jones in. Tally went out, four out of six for 47 yards passing. Preston Jones, the more pure passer, was injured in the spring, hurt his wrist in the fall, hasn't got as many reps as Ray Goff would like to see him have going into the season, and he's always getting some on-the-job on the training here. Second down from the 24-yard line. Penalty marker down to the backfield. This is Ware out to the 32-yard line, tackled by Danny Boyd, a true freshman for Ole Miss. Again, on that play of nine yards, but the penalty marker is down. What, they're gonna, what you're going to see is I think that Cleveland is playing fullback as a Max Strong playing fullback and jumped a little bit soon. And that's one of the things that happens when you get a new quarterback in there. you got a new cadence. Sometimes just that extra split second is enough to get a back in uh, motion. But Ray feels like he's got to play Preston Jones. He thinks he can develop into a fine passer. As you see, Max Strong off and running a little early there. Yeah, it's a tough situation in terms of public relations for a new head coach because Greg Talley is a pretty good player, and he's played pretty well, and he's only a sophomore, yet he's got a star in the making, possibly, in redshirt freshman Preston Jones. It's not as though you have an aging senior there. You've got two young fellows. Here comes Brian Cleveland down at the 18. I should say, here comes Ole Miss defense. Kelvin Pritchett, the junior from Atlanta, led the way. And it's on plays like that you remember Troy Sadowski. <laughs> we were a little bit, but Troy was an All-American last year, of course, a tight end. We were a little bit, uh, well, we didn't feel like he could was a threat as a receiver. Let's put it that way. But he sure, sure was a good tackle out there playing tight end. And he would permit the, that running back to get the corner turned. He'd get the linebacker hook. We're not having as much luck with that this year. Georgia one out of two on third down conversion attempts. This is third down ten. Cleveland in motion. Penalty markers down. That took a long time to get that playoff. I believe the 25 second clock went down to zero. If so, it'll be a five yard delay of the game penalty against Georgia. Remember the red shirt freshman Preston Jones in at the quarterback spot. It is a delay of game. That'll be five yards marked off against the Bulldogs. Trailing Ole Miss 10 7 9 38 to go for first half. Yardage is hard enough by, to come by, and as a coach, you just hate to see that happen. Just give up five yards, especially, Bob, as you mentioned, on a critical third down. Now it's third down 15, and the ball inside the 15-yard line. And they're going to lose more yardage on this play. Cleveland is driven back all the way inside the five, make it Max Strong, the fullback, driven back. Pritchett was there once again. Ole Miss defense, when the Ole Miss offense couldn't get it fourth down and in inches, couldn't get the first down, I'm sure the Ole Miss coaches said, go in there and stop them. But they have this idea. That was tremendous defensive play by Ole Miss. And a wise call by uh, George Hafner. No sense in taking a chance this early in the game. Run the draw, get, a, get another opportunity, line up again with better field position. Esther will punt out of his own end zone. Coleman back and take the punt. Esther hit this one pretty good. Great hang time. Coleman back inside Ole Miss territory at the 47. Georgia's got him covered and tackled at the 40-yard line. The first man to get his hands on him was Kevin Brown. He's the leading tackler on the Georgia special teams. A of 41 yards and a loss of six. You finally reach that great hidden beach. It doesn't get any better. The heat of the day, ooh, the cool of the spring. It doesn't get any better than this. There's only one law. Let the good times pour. You can care less. Who could ask for more? It doesn't get any better. Old Milwaukee, Old Milwaukee Light. It doesn't get any better than this.
Drive a Volvo, because replacement parts are hard to find. Portions of today's game are brought to you by Gatorade Thirst Quencher. Gatorade is thirst aid for that deep down body thirst. And by Delta Airlines. We love to fly and it shows. Billy Brewer, the head coach at Ole Miss, of course, a all-star performer at quarterback and defensive back for the Rebels during the heyday of Ole Miss Rebel football. And when he came back to Ole Miss as head coach, he wanted to reinstitute some of the tradition in tradition-rich Oxford, Mississippi, one of the most beautiful campuses in the United States. And before the ball game, Coach Brewer, Dog Brewer, as he is lovingly called here, leads his team through the Grove on the campus to the enthusiastic support of the alums and boosters and students who gather there. And it's, uh, it's a real picture of collegiate football. Darnell going along down the middle looking for Willie Green. He could not hold on at the 15. Willie Green already today has four catches for 110 yards, but not this time. That ball is thrown on the money. And I think that a lot of people could get this throw in over the top. I'm not sure that most free safeties are deep enough in the middle third. But here, Mike Jones supposed to have the deep third. Willie Green has run in there behind them. George Wynn in quick pursuit. Willie just can't hold on. And remember, Georgia's best defensive back, senior Ben Smith, hamstring problems and not able to perform today. Second down, 10. On the 40 for Ole Miss, leading 10-7. Darnell on the option. He'll hold it, and he goes down at the 38. Knifing through Matt McCormick. McCormick started today in place of Kurt Douglas and has really performed well. Five tackles, Junior from Miami. He's a fifth-year walk-on. Bob has already got one interception this year and was actually forced into action by the injury to not only Curtis Douglas, but I think, what is it, Alan Brown in the first game? Yes. Third down 12 from the 38-yard line. Darnell wants to go upstairs again. He'll have to tuck it. And he'll have to take it to the turf at the 33. No Lewis with the penetration. That's Lowe's fourth tackle on the day. Yes, three sacks. Make this four. See who got there first. Cowens is coming. Lewis is coming, and it's tough pressure from the outside. Lewis, as you pointed out, Bob got there first and hung on for the sack. Cowens got there mom momentarily. It's fourth and 17 from the 33. Arthur Marshall back to take the Ole Miss apart from Charles Children. It is a cannon shot. Marshall drops it, and now he's down at the nine. He loses three yards on the play. 55-yard punt by Childers, his longest of the year. Just a little reminder, when you've got a job to do this fall, you can count on us. True Value Hardware Stores. Keep drafts out in the cold with the 3M Window Insulator Bonus Pack Kit. It covers six windows for just $10.99. Then seal air leaks with tuck cloth duct tape. A 60-yard roll is just $3.99. And get ready for the long nights of winter with GE soft white bulbs. A four-pack is just $1.88 at participating True Value hardware stores and home centers. Tonight on TBS, when a town goes bad. Well, we got us a problem. <laughs> Big problem. He was hired to bring back justice. Nobody's taking over this town. But when he tries to take control, I'm gonna kill you. The town fights back. I'm the one that brought you here. And I'm the one that's gonna run you out. Chris Christopherson, Jan Michael Vincent, and Victoria Principal. Vigilante Force. 805 Eastern on TBS tonight. 7.05 to go in the first half. First down 10 from the nine yard line after the 55 yard punt. That's the career long for Childers. Preston Jones running for his life and out of bounds at the 13-yard line. Line of scrimmage was the nine. So he gets about four, maybe a little more on the play. Preston Jones came in at the beginning of the second quarter. It was planned that way by Ray Goff. Greg Talley played the first quarter, and now Preston Jones seeing action here in the Tennessee game. Jones was in in the second and fourth quarter. When Jones came in in the fourth quarter, he threw that touchdown pass to Arthur Marshall. 
Exactly. Got a lot of composure and uh, was recruited by Vince Dooley. Vince told him that they changed the offense if he came to Georgia. One of the long line of quarterbacks that Vince told that to. <laughs> <laughs> and then they did change it a little bit. Vince stepping aside and Ray Goff coming in. Here's Larry Ware. And Ware drives to about the 18 before he bumped out of bounds. Near the first down. McAllister knocked him out over there. Chris Broom in there at tight end trying to get that linebacker hook, but it's just uh, just not getting it done. Just fighting him down the line. Couldn't get the corner turn. And that's so important to make that toss go. If you can get that outside linebacker, you can get that head on the outside and get him cut off, you got a chance to make that play go big time. Third down one, Georgia with the tight ends in there, Nikki Pitts and Kirk Warner. Georgia only one out of three on third down conversions today. Ware tries the left side. Does he get the block? Yes. First down, Georgia. Out to about the 23-24 yard line. Nicky Pitts has been moved over. He's a true freshman to tight end. He's from Columbus, Georgia. Pitts had been playing at left outside linebacker. As Georgia tries, you've been talking about it, Tim, tries to get some, some power up front from the tight end position. Exactly. And you notice they ran to Nicky Pitts, just as you mentioned, moved to tight end. They're trying to create some competition there, trying to unsettle some of those established veterans, get them playing with more enthusiasm. But they feel Pitts is a powerful young man that can become a good tight end. First first down of this quarter. 6.25 remaining in the half. Justin Jones, incomplete, had his back wide open over there, or that was Kirk Warner, the tight end, just bounced off the shoulder pads. Georgia working the periphery. They're working the outside. They're working the perimeter. They drag Warner all the way across, they hit him in the short uh, zone on the weak side. The flanker is running outside patterns, whereas Old Miss is working the inside of the field, Bob. They're trying to play fake the linebackers and hold the linebackers and throw it down the middle. And I think once Georgia gets out of this danger zone, loses this backed up position, they'll be doing the same thing. The second down, Preston Jones tosses it over the middle. Warner catches it this time. Like a bull gets to the 39-yard line. Kirk Warner, Sean Cobb makes the tackle, a gain of 16. The great thing about Preston Jones is he's got the ability to zip it hard to the outside. So as a cornerback or as a defensive back, you cannot just lay inside and, and wait for the dump. They've been running those outside routes. Now they come back to uh, Warner. He just hooks in between the linebackers, catches the ball, and then does a good job with it after that. Georgia first down at their own 39, trailing Ole Miss 10-7. Preston Jones. Just got rid of it in the nick of time. It is complete inbounds at the 48-yard line to Sean Hummings. And then Preston Jones was leveled by Daryl Smith, number 53. But he got rid of it for a gain of 13. We're talking about the strength in the arm, and here's where it pays off. Sets up. Receiver making the break. He lets it go. Smith lets him have it, puts him on the dirt. Watch him, watch him, uh, you know, he can hear this coming, gets rid of that ball, goes down, but it's a completion, he must get his head up, wants to see it. Georgia on the drive, they started at the Georgia 9. Over on the left side goes Brian Cleveland, inside at the 45 to about the 44-yard line, 540 to go in the first half. They want to overlook the fine job by Sean Cummings on that last play of getting his feet in bounds and catching that ball. Catching a pass from Jones is going to be different for you than catching a pass from uh, Greg Talley. Greg Talley will put it on the money, but it isn't going to, it's not going to pop in there like uh, the ball coming from Preston Jones. Well, we'll try to, you saw that sign, a uh, marriage proposal here in the end zone. <laughs> we'll try to find out whether Melissa says yes or no. It was Brian Cleveland popping it up. Oh, missed ball at the 46-yard line. Pritchett came away with it. Number 92. So turnovers crushed Ole Miss last week. This week they get a break on a turnover. But Pritchett, you're going to see Pritchett make great penetration. He's going to get upfield. Tony Bennett closes it. Pritchett's upfield, forcing a cutback. And then, pow! Who is that? Pete Harris, it looked like, come in, knocks it out, and it fell right back into Kelvin Pritchett's hands. 10-7 Ole Miss leading, and now they have the ball at the Ole Miss 46. Georgia looked to be on a drive. Georgia had started at their nine. Then the turnover. Darnell, plenty of time to throw right in the middle. Willie Green to the 28-yard line. Willie Green with his fifth catch of the afternoon. 
a gain of 27 yards. Green has 137 yards in catches already. You think they missed Ben Smith? Oh, my. See, this isn't so much talent as it is instinct. I mean, look it. You got to cut. What you got to do is get something on it. Get some pressure on it. Realize where they're hurting you. And you can do that as, as a coach with calls, but the players have to understand what's going on, too. At the 27-yard line of Georgia, first down Ole Miss. Darnell's going to keep going to this well. Incomplete, right over the middle, intended for Jeffrey Holder. Ole Miss, a little bit unusual. Generally speaking, when teams are winning, that means they'll run the ball more. Often, you have the big passing yardage trying to catch up. Ole Miss, however, they're averaging 249 yards a game passing when they win and only 158 when they've lost. So passing has been significant to Ole Miss winning this year, and Darnell has 189 yards here today already. And with Brewer and Red Parker, you've got two creative offensive line, uh, minds. And, and when you get Darnell on a streak, he just plays to it. You want to try to keep him hot. Not any problem today in terms of the sunshine. Second down 10. Darnell on what might have been a broken play back at the 30. McCormick with the stop. You see 83 Kirk Warner with some ice on his wrist. George is tied in. Starting tight end and pass receiving tight end. He has two catches on the day so far. Warner came out of the game during that last Georgia drive prior to the fumble. So now it's going to be third down 13 for Ole Miss with a timeout down the field. Four minutes, 15 seconds to go in the first half. You're finally reaching that great hidden beach. It doesn't get any better. The heat of the day. Ooh, the cool of the spring. It doesn't get any better than this. Better than this. There's only one law. Let the good times pour. You can care less. Who could ask for more? It doesn't get any better. Old Milwaukee, Old Milwaukee Light. It doesn't get any better than this. We are the most complex life form on Earth. And yet we are virtually defenseless. We have no claws. No fangs, no protective shell. In fact, our only natural defense is our intelligence. And intelligent people help protect themselves by driving Volvos. Ole Miss leading 10-7, 4.15 to go until halftime. Georgia Pacific Halftime Report comes along. Craig Sager standing by with scores and highlights from college football around the nation. We'll hear from the Pride of the South, the Ole Miss Marching Band, plus Craig will be talking to Bill Arnsparger, the athletic director at the University of Florida, about all the happenings down there. Of course, as you well know, Galen Hall has resigned as head coach at the University of Florida, and it's a program under fire. We're talking to Bill Arnsparger about what's happening in Gainesville. Third and 13 from the 30. Darnell, no place to go. Good coverage and also good pressure by Georgia. And that's what uh, some fisticuffs about to erupt down there. And that's with David Hargett on the sideline. Georgia's strong safety looks to be shaken up too. And they're already beset with injuries. And you thought it couldn't get worse. Ben Smith is not playing. Chris Wilson has a hamstring. And now Hargett, that looks like a shoulder they're working on. Here's field goal attempt by Brian Lee. It's a 48-yard attempt on a fourth down 14. He did it well. Does that have the accuracy? No. Wide to the left side. 48-yard attempt goes awry. Ole Miss continues to lead 10-7 with three and a half to go. Little fisticuffs down there after that play. Uh, Bill Goldberg pushing a little bit, wreaking a little havoc. You, I, you know what you need to do is you need to arouse some emotion. Defensively, you cannot play with finesse. You know, you have to play with heart. You have to play with aggression. You got to get it going. Uh, and he's up there trying to get things happening up front, and all of a sudden they're throwing the ball over his head. It's frustrating, I know, for a defensive lineman. First down 10 from the 31-yard line, Georgia Bulldogs. Ole Miss continues to lead 10-7. Preston Jones continues at quarterback for the Bulldogs. 
Can't find anybody to throw to. He gets about a yard, and that's all. Chris Mitchell came up from strong safety to finish him off. Old Miss supposed to be a three-man front with four linebackers, and actually uh, what we're seeing most of this afternoon is four down linemen. They've got the, Tony Bennett has been down all afternoon. Get Keith Thompson playing that weak side linebacker, so it's a little bit different look than Bragoff might have seen on film in their previous games. 2.49 to go in the first half from Oxford, Mississippi. Georgia's Bulldogs have trailed all the way. Ole Miss got out to a 10 to nothing lead. Preston Jones at strong arm. It is complete to Sean Hummings to the 44-yard lines and out of bounds. Chauncey Godwin was covering for Ole Miss. A gain of 24, and you see the 30-yard six that Preston Jones possesses. Let's watch Cummings' work. Cummings' work here. He's had 11 receptions coming into this game, and he's averaging about 20 yards a catch. Gets inside the jam. It's a little bit of move on the defensive back, but he knows the ball's come to the outside, and pow, he puts it right on the money. Great position by Chauncey Godwin. Just a perfect route by Hummings and a throw by Preston Jones. Preston Jones calls a timeout and goes over to talk to his coaching staff and to Greg Talley with the Ole Miss Rebels leading by three. There's a motor oil that talks about quality, always has, always will. Well, Valvoline makes the highest quality motor oil recommended by any automobile manufacturer. Oh yeah, unlike the competition, Valvoline also makes the motor oil used by 7 out of 10 Indy 500 crew chiefs. That's 7 out of 10 Indy crew chiefs over the last 10 years. People who know, use Valvoline. Eight, six, hurry and you make it. Delta Airlines ticket agent Sam Singletary knows how to get people moving. Mr. Franklin, Mr. Franklin, you're back. But sometimes he has to show off a few moves of his own, the kind of moves that made him a first-string halfback. Sam Singletary shares a feeling with everyone at Delta. He loves what he's doing, and it shows. We love Thanks. to fly, and it shows. Two and a half minutes to go until halftime. Ole Miss leading at 10-7. The ball at the 44-yard line of Ole Miss. Georgia has trailed all the way. And Ole Miss defensively has been doing a good job covering their wounds. They've been uh, strategically hiding folks, not getting them in situations that were they were in last week where they were outmatched. You know, last week, Jeff Carter found himself in some man-to-man -man situations. Well, he's a free safety, and he's not that fast, and he... He's just not going to win in those situations. And they've been protecting him a little bit more uh, Saturday, uh, today, not letting Georgia get at him. First down from the 44. Penalty markers are down. Play will be stopped. Georgia had a little bit of confusion even after the delay there. They re-huddled, called it again, sent two receivers wide to the right side. Marshall and Maxwell out of your picture. And for Georgia on defense, Bob, it's a little harder to, uh, to hide your to hide your sores because uh, you've got so many of them out there. You've got Chris Wilson can't play, so Al Jackson, the true freshman, is playing for him. Ben Smith is down. Mike Jones in for him, and then Pat Renard came on as we saw Hargett on the sideline. So it's, it's hard to hide your inexperience when it's all over the place. And now we hear that there is a pinched nerve in the shoulder of David Hargett, but he may return to the secondary for Georgia. First down 15 Bulldogs offensively right now at this field. Just a couple of yards. Larry Ware, the tailback, sophomore from Montgomery. Kelvin Pritchett makes the stop again. When your defense is banged up and they're having a little trouble stopping the other team's offense, that's when you have to put something together. That's when you have to come up with a drive. That's when you have to lean on the strength of your team as Kirk Warner comes back into the football game. You see his uh, thumb now taped up. Chucky Mullins in as the nickelback for Ole Miss, a redshirt freshman, on second down 13 for Georgia at the 47 yard line. Where goes into motion? Here comes the blitz. Preston Jones hauled down at the 37 yard line. Pete Harris was the first man there, number 49, a loss of 16 yards. Ole Miss teed it up and just fired off of the snap of that ball. Yeah, they've been faking the blitz, faking the blitz, faking the blitz, playing conservatively on defense, and here they come now. They're coming after him with everything. Pete Harris breaks clean. 
Nobody blocked him. That was a missed blocking assignment, or Preston Jones was supposed to. It was a hot release for Preston Jones. He's supposed to realize that Harris isn't going to be picked up. He's going to dump the ball in a hurry. Well, for Georgia, it's third down forever. Let's call it third down 25. Minute 12 to go until halftime. Here comes Cleveland around the right side. Nothing there. The Rebels have dug in. Tony Bennett, the all-star candidate, and Sean Cobb combining. This Ole Miss defense in the second quarter has just stuffed Preston Jones and the Georgia offense. I don't know what they try to do, it seems. Preston Jones not getting very advantageous field position to show his stuff. But uh, you're right, Old Miss defense has played well. They were embarrassed last week. Billy Brewer told me that. Robert Henry, the defensive coordinator, they were embarrassed. It, and it got so bad that it wasn't bad anymore. It was you know, off the scale. And uh, they had something to prove coming back here. They just... Uh, they never could get on track. They never could grab a hold. Things went downhill, and uh, they never could come up with a play to turn the tide. And so they just had to, you know, they've got some leaders on that defense, though, as you mentioned, Tony Bennett, Pritchett, and Sean Cobb, and it's just a matter of Don Price pulling those guys together and saying, hey, get that out of your mind, forget it. Now we get to get about our business here. George's problem is they saw a horrible film, a team on film last week, and they probably had a little bit of a hard time getting up to play this game because they didn't see a team that looked very competitive. But last week was not Old Miss. This week is. Pat Coleman back to take the punt on fourth down 27. Joey Hester. Gets rid of it from about his 28. Good hang time. Coleman. Gonna let it bounce. It gets a neutral bounce and then is touched down outside the 25-yard line by Dwayne Grace with 46 seconds remaining in the half. That was a 37-yard punt by Hester. And Saturday, October 28th is our next telecast on TBS. It'll be either Tennessee at LSU down in Baton Rouge or Mississippi State's Bulldogs at Auburn on the Plains depending on the availability of the game. First down 10 from the 27. Here comes Randy Baldwin, tripped up in the backfield. Knifing through Jeff Finch, the sophomore from Wilburn, Georgia. And we talked about Ole Miss having trouble on defense. Uh, you know, the other way to look at that is that Alabama took advantage of every turnover they got. And uh, what a find they have in quarterback Gary Hollinsworth. I mean, uh, come out, throw five touchdown passes. I think that's the most ever thrown by an Alabama quarterback. Second down seven, Darnell upstairs. Looking for Willie Green, but overthrows everybody by a long way. Twelve seconds remaining in the half. Remember, both of these teams have one loss in the SEC. They've lost two games in a row, but they're both one and one. And with the increased competition among lead teams, one loss will probably, if you can just finish with one, will probably win you or tie you for a conference championship in most cases so both teams feel they are still in the running but to get two losses it becomes another story in the sec so this is a critical turnaround kind of game for either one of these teams here's thick pin the fullback for the 42 43 yard line clock continues to tick down to two and it stops there so they'll move the chains Ole Miss leading 10-7. And now Ole Miss decides to call a timeout so they can make one more whack at it here before halftime. Willie Green came limping off the field after that last pattern. The ball appeared to be underthrown, but I think that the, but I think Willie Green deaccelerated down the field, and he may have a he may have a pull. Well, Georgia has passed the football for uh, a right around 100 yards and run the football for only 43. Ole Miss has only 46 yards rushing, but 189 in the air. As Darnell is nine out of 15 today, and Willie Green has five catches for 136 yards. So Ole Miss has moved the ball effectively in the air, leads in this game by a score of 10 to seven with one more play coming up here from Bought Hemingway Stadium in Oxford, Mississippi. crowd today of about 30,000 estimated. The early starting time, according to the Ole Miss folks, 
discourage some of the folks from southern Mississippi and from the outreaches from Oxford and the state Oxford in northern Mississippi uh, from making the long drive since it's an 11.40 kickoff here East uh, Central Time. So a less than full house. Swing past a big pin out on the right side. After that, <laughs> I was kind of expecting more of a spectacular play than a swing pass after the timeout, but no. And at halftime, Ole Miss leads by a score of 10 to 7. And now with all the scores and highlights from other college games around the nation, here's Craig Sager in our Atlanta studios. Thanks, Bob. Gary Darnell is off to a good start in his coaching debut at Florida. Highlights the latest scores in a moment. But first... This page from the SEC History Book, brought to you by Sitko, the sign of quality. Only a handful of football teams have one player whose name and school are mentioned in the same breath. Archie and Herschel are two SEC stars whose accomplishments shine as brightly now as then. Herschel's Heisman Trophy and 41 school records prove his point. But when the junkyard dog give me the ball, I'll show you how it's done. Dogs on the field, now hunker on down. How about them dogs with a battle sound? Herschel from the backfield picking out holes. Irish, can you catch him? No child, no. And at Old Miss, Archie's single season scoring mark is only one of many that stop people from asking Archie who. They try to make a tackle. They wonder where he went. Archie's super manning. Should run for president. He wears that number 18. For the big man, red and blue. A Bell South Mobility car fall may not improve your golf game, but it will give you more time to give it a shot. Okay, Mr. Simmons, big swing. A Bell South Boom. Mobility car fall may not improve your backhand. Oh, think we're done. But it will give you more time to work on it. Bell South Mobility. We're the phone company for your car. Call us at 1-800-351-3355 because we know what you're working for. Your life is changing, and State Farm is there. I'm State Farm agent Jim McConnell. Terry Saylor's life insurance started out pretty simple. Then there were three children, two new mortgages, a big job promotion for Terry, and for Mrs. Saylor, a life plan of her own. Seven updates in just six years. State Farm agents are there to start you out with life insurance that works for you. And like a good neighbor. And we're there to keep it working for you. At BIC, we sympathize with the ways that you pull and stretch your face in search of a better shave. That's why we've created the BIC Metal Shaver. The patented BIC Metal stretches and smooths your skin thanks to its unique metal guard bar, so the shaver glides closely and comfortably. So instead of stretching, start reaching for a BIC Metal Shaver. It stretches your skin for a better shave. And that's no stretch. There's something elemental in us all. A basic need to seek out for ourselves a quiet place. Oshkosh now makes clothing for that search. Clothing that brings together the soul of both nature and man. Rugged, comfortable, enduring. Celebrate your natural instincts in Oshkosh sportswear. Now available at Sears. Today's college football halftime report is brought to you by Georgia Pacific. Ask for Georgia Pacific building products with superior performance built in. Welcome to the Georgia Pacific halftime report. For the past 12 years, Oklahoma and Nebraska have taken turns representing the Big 8 in the Orange Bowl. In fact, you have to go all the way back to 1968 to find a season in which one or two of them did not win or tie for the conference crown. But this year, hoping to end the stampede, the Buffaloes of Colorado taking on Iowa State this afternoon. Colorado comes in ranked third in the nation. But Iowa State's Ron Wilkinson caps off a drive with a three-yard touchdown run. Colorado comes back. Darian Hagan keeps it, goes in for the TD after an onside kick by Iowa State failed. And right now, Colorado is on top in the second quarter, 17-10. Navy and Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh started out this game in the first quarter with six penalties and also they lost two fumbles. 
So it was a chance for Navy to take advantage of Pittsburgh's miscues, which they did when Alton Grizzard scrambled and found Jerry Dawson in the end zone for the touchdown, and Navy, surprisingly, was on top 7 to nothing. But then Alex Van Pelt, the freshman quarterback for Pittsburgh, came back, found Ricky Turner for the TD, and Pittsburgh now leads at the half 10 to 7. Georgia Tech in Clemson. Georgia Tech coming off a victory last week, and now they are on top of Clemson in the second quarter, 13 to 6. Florida State travels to Virginia Tech this afternoon. And there you have the Virginia Tech receivers down there trying to get something going, but it failed. They had to turn the ball over immediately. Florida State came back. Peter Tom Willis with Dexter Carter for a TD. Then Willis scored in the second quarter. He has thrown for two and also run for one. Here's another scoring toss to Ronald Lewis. It's 24 to nothing. Virginia Tech having an easy time. That game is also at intermission. Vandy and Florida. The Florida Gators, of course, under Gary Darnell. John Gromos, the quarterback for Vandy, picked off by Godfrey Miles. And he makes a nice return all the way down to the three-yard line. And that sets up a touchdown for Emmett Smith. And Emmett Smith, the Gators' top running back, goes in. Florida now leads Vandy by the score of 10 to nothing. Maryland and Wake Forest. Maryland is on top 24 to 7. Neil O'Donnell is having a great afternoon so far against that Wake Forest defense. He's thrown for 239 yards and two TDs. Temple is 0-6, but worse than that, Coach Jerry Burnt has lost 24 straight games. It looks like he'll lose his 25th in a row. It is 22 to nothing. Holy Cross and Army. Halfback Mike Merriweather has two touchdowns for Army. Army leads that one 24-9. Virginia leads North Carolina 21-10. And Baylor and SMU. Baylor leads 10 to nothing. That's in the second quarter. In the Big Ten, Indiana, Ohio State, the Buckeyes are on top by a touchdown. At Vaught Hemingway Stadium in Oxford, Mississippi, Old Miss leads by the score of 10-7. We'll be back with first half highlights. But first, a visit to the University of Georgia. The University of Georgia. Its 13 schools and colleges offer undergraduate degrees in more than 140 major fields. 25 master's degrees doctoral degrees in 80 areas, and a broad spectrum of programs that literally span the globe. A university that sets the pace for educational excellence. A university the Carnegie Report places among the nation's very best. Well, the weather around here can get messy, so people protect their homes with Georgia Pacific building products. Our hardboard siding puts the toughest possible protection between a house and a downpour. And GP Summit Roofing can handle 30 years of weather guaranteed from siding and roofing to molding and doors. Every GP product has superior performance built in. So when you're shopping for building materials, ask for GP. That's all you need to know. Compaq is the leader in performance and intelligent innovation. Martin, we've got an hour tops. Make or break. Hey, it's made. Compaq has gone the extra mile for today's power-hungry users. Give me the next quarter's figures. Yes. Compaq has consistently shown engineering excellence. Ten minutes to spare. That's hardly even exciting, Martin. Speak for yourself. There's something elemental in us all a basic need to seek out for ourselves a quiet place. Oshkosh now makes clothing for that search. Clothing that brings together the soul of both nature and man. Rugged, comfortable, enduring. Celebrate your natural instincts in Oshkosh sportswear. Now available at Sears. Welcome back to the Georgia Pacific Halftime Report. Ole Miss has lost the last 12 meetings with the Georgia Bulldogs. In fact, the last time that Ole Miss defeated Georgia was back when Ray Goff was the quarterback for the Bulldogs. But this afternoon, Ole Miss is off to a good start. They're off to a good start, if you remember, a week ago, too, on top 21-0 to Alabama before giving up 62 points. They hope for better results today, and John Darnell found Willie Green, a 36-yard gain to the 13-yard line where four plays later, Randy Baldwin went to the touchdown, and the Ole Miss Rebels again had a first-quarter lead. Late in the quarter, Greg Talley for Georgia to Kevin Maxwell down to the two-yard line. They switched ends at the end of the quarter. And Brian Cleveland went in for the score. And that was Georgia's only TD and only scoring play so far of the game. It is 10-7 at intermission. 
Well, elsewhere in the SEC, the big game, of course, that people thought going into the season was LSU and Auburn, last year's co-champions. But now they are playing merely for survival in the SEC race because they all each already have a conference loss. And later tonight, it will be Rutgers taking on Kentucky. The sun may be shining in Florida, but a dark cloud lingers over the university. We'll be back with Florida Athletic Director Bill Arnsbarger in a moment. the South, the Ole Miss Marching Band, directed by Thomas Wagoner. In a moment, Craig Sager will have more from Atlanta, but first, let's take a look at Ole Miss right here in Oxford. In the mid 1800s here's Joe Montana for Astrolite Batteries. This is AstroTurf. This is the Astrodome. He lives on today in the eight Barnard professors who have distinguished themselves as renowned scholars in health sciences, physical acoustics, and engineering. The Barnard Scholars, contributing to man's basic storehouse of knowledge through superior research, instruction, and service. You've seen me hit the ball down this line. And I'm known for my ability to cross this line. But you'll never see me anywhere near these lines. Be like Bo. Say no. The Southeastern Conference, the foundation. Here's Joe Montana for Astrolite Batteries. This is AstroTurf. This is the Astrodome. And this is an Astrolite battery. AstroTurf and the Astrodome revolutionized football. Astrolite uses revolutionary power technology in its car batteries. Get Astrolite, a powerful top quality battery at a price you can't pass up. Astrolite. Astronomical! There's something elemental in us all. A basic need to seek out for ourselves a quiet place. Oshkosh now makes clothing for that search. Clothing brings together the soul of both nature and man. Rugged, comfortable, enduring. Celebrate your natural instincts in Oshkosh Sportswear. Now available at Sears. Welcome back to the Georgia Pacific Halftime Report. Five games into the season, Galen Hawes resigned as coach of the Florida Gators, admitting to several NCAA violations, including bonus payments to coaches and personal financial aid to a player. With us is Florida Athletic Director Bill Arnsberger. And Coach, this game is such a surprise to most people across the country. What about you? What did you learn of these violations? We, the violations were verified uh, Monday a week ago, and uh, we uh, received Coach Hall's resignation on Wednesday and effective uh, Sunday. Why was there not a hearing or why didn't Coach uh, come to you and say, I want to fight these? It seems that so many people are rallying to his defense. He had that opportunity, it's my understanding, and uh, decided that uh, he wanted to uh, give us his resignation and in his res resignation, well, he uh, admitted being involved in the allegations that had been verified to us. What happens from here, specifically with the NCAA? Well, you know, the institution, as Dr. Bryan, our chief executive officer, said uh, 
Sunday night that the, that the institution did what uh, we felt like we had to do. And uh, we are fully confident that the NCAA will, uh, you know, do what they have to do. We informed the NCAA of, uh, of this uh, move on our part, and uh, we did not consult with them, but we informed them of the action we were taking. In 1985, Florida at the time was handed the most severe penalties ever handed out by the NCAA as far as the football program goes, yet you still have violations after that. What is the answer? How do you clean up a program? Well, I think you have to have confidence in the people that uh, work with you. And those people uh, must be held accountable to uh, play by the rules. We're talking specifically about the football program, but it's been the basketball program that's been the news mostly, and a lot of people are speculating that the basketball program may face the death penalty. What's the situation there? Well, you know, there are many allegations, and those allegations need to be proved, which they at this time have not been. Uh, we will be looking into those allegations, and when they are proven or when they're not proven, then we will uh, you know, make, take whatever action, make whatever statement needs to be made. Gary Darnell is your interim coach, but is there a search going on for a head coach, and who would you like to get? Well, I don't feel like it's fair to anyone to mention names, and I will not mention names, but uh, we have committed ourselves to a national search. I discussed this with Coach Darnell uh, on Sunday afternoon, and he uh, agrees with that, and, and uh, we'll proceed accordingly. Uh, we're very happy that Gary's with us at this time, but uh, we need to make sure that we uh, get the proper leader for the University of Florida in our program, and that's what we'll be trying to uh, do in the next uh, couple of months. Well, good luck, and thanks for being with us. Thank you. Appreciate the opportunity. And Gary Darnell is off to a good start in his Florida coaching debut. A field goal has been added. Florida now leads by a score of 13 to nothing over Vanderbilt early in the second quarter. Last week, Georgia Tech broke a 16-game losing streak in the ACC with a victory over Maryland. They are following it up by taking a 20 to 6 lead over Clemson in the second quarter. And so much for that 7 to nothing lead by Iowa State. Colorado has just added a couple of more touchdowns since we last left you. It is 31-10, the Buffaloes lead, second quarter. Stay tuned for the second half of Georgia and Old Miss. Today's college football halftime report has been brought to you by Georgia Pacific. Ask for Georgia Pacific building products with superior performance built in. It's fueled the victories of Super Bowl champions and Sandlot superstars. It's as welcome on a hot cinder track as a cold sheet of ice. It is unsurpassed at supplying fluids, minerals, and energy. It goes beyond refreshment. It produces results. It's everywhere athletes compete. It's sports. It's Gatorade. At BIC, we sympathize with the ways that you pull and stretch your face in search of a better shave. That's why we've created the Big Metal Shaver. The patented Big Metal stretches and smooths your skin thanks to its unique metal guard bar, so the shaver glides closely and comfortably. So instead of stretching, start reaching for a Big Metal Shaver. It stretches your skin for a better shave. And that's no stretch. There's something elemental in us all. A basic need to seek out for ourselves a quiet place. Oshkosh now makes clothing for that search. Clothing that brings together the soul of both nature and man. Rugged, comfortable, enduring. Celebrate your natural instincts in Oshkosh sportswear. Now available at Sears. Sunday on Award Theater. David O. Selznick's epic story of a family torn by raw emotion. Have they come to name you Pearl? She was a woman no man could tame. They were brothers obsessed with her. Pearl Chavez is my girl. Their desires put them on opposite sides of the street. I hope Pearl gives you a pretty funeral, Jesse. Gregory Peck, Joseph Cotton, and Jennifer Jones. Duel in the Sun, 1035 Eastern on TBS, Sunday morning.
Oxford, Mississippi. The Georgia Bulldogs trailing Ole Miss by a score of 10 to 7 as we're just a couple of minutes away from the beginning of the second half in the brand new press box facilities here at Vaught Hemingway Stadium. Langston Rogers, the sports information director, gave us a tour yesterday, and we'd like to say that we appreciate the new facilities here from a television point of view. Ole Miss has, Tim Foley, really dominated this game. They've had the ball five more minutes than Georgia in the first half. 196 yards in the air, and 143 yards of that came on first down and could be leading by more than 10 to 7. Yes, if Willie Green would have made the catch in the uh, first quarter there, it would have been an opportunity they got another touchdown. And uh, Georgia having a little problem on defense with injuries. A lot of inexperience in that secondary, and I'm sure Ole Miss will continue to try to take advantage of that, that youth in the uh, Georgia secondary. Well, the Ole Miss Rebels, uh, Darnell just came out airing the ball out, knowing about those injuries, and unless Georgia can stop that, I have seen no reason for them to, to stop throwing the ball. So neither team has rushed the ball all that well, but Ole Miss really hasn't needed to. Let's take a look at the Gatorade first quencher first half statistics now. Both teams are back out here, and you see the big difference in total yards, 242 for the Rebels, 143 for Georgia, and one big Georgia turnover. Greg Talley seemed to be moving the team well in the first quarter. Uh, Preston Jones had a little trouble getting anything going in the second quarter. The field position was working against him. And I would imagine that Ray Goff will come back with uh, Talley in the third quarter. So Willie Green having himself a career day with five catches, 136 of the 196 yards. You mentioned uh, Tally. It looks like he's going to be the guy who'll start the third quarter. Preston Jones just didn't have the good opportunity in the second quarter to get the Bulldogs moving very much. Critical game for both of these teams as both are one and one in the conference. And going two losses this early in the SEC schedule obviously spells a tough road for either one of the teams. Ole Miss will play at Tulane and then again play Vanderbilt at homecoming here on the 28th. Georgia, after this game, will play at Vanderbilt next week. Vanderbilt losing 13 to nothing down at Gainesville, Florida today. And then Kentucky, October 28th at Athens, Georgia. As you mentioned in the opening, Bob, Georgia has beaten Ole Miss 12 times in a row, 12 consecutive times. So this would be a, a true upset. the 11-yard line, Arthur Marshall to the 28-yard line, and the Georgia Bulldogs will come out and try to get back in this game. They, they are back in it. Try to get back in front of the game. They trailed 10 to nothing, then 10 to 7. That's what Georgia did in the first half. Missed the field goal, got the TD, the punt, and a fumble, and, and that, Georgia started that drive, and actually last one down to the bottom, but their own nine, moving the ball quite well before they fumbled it out of midfield. That was the big turnover I was talking about. On the first down. Sally hands it off. Out to the 31-yard line goes Larry Ware. Remind you again that Rodney Hampton, who had arthroscopic knee surgery for Georgia last Sunday, is here. You see him on the sideline. And Georgia's running game has not been very successful. Ray Goff, I'm sure, does not want to use this young man. But Hampton wants to play. He said he didn't want to make the trip unless he played. Maybe he's getting ready to stretch it out and come in the game here now. Certainly don't want to take a chance with that kind of talent. And play him here, and you may lose him for the whole year. Larry Ware, who's playing the tailback spot along with Brian Cleveland instead of Hampton, gets it out near the 35-yard line. Might mention also that Alfonso Ellis, the Georgia junior starting fullback, had arthroscopic surgery on Wednesday. He's, of course, out for this game, but Georgia says he may be back for next week's game against Vanderbilt. And Ellis has always done a fine job springing that tailback, whoever it was. He's, he's had a real knack for getting people on the ground. This is third down three. They could use Ellis right here. It is complete for the first down. Sean Hummings making the diving grab. Don Price covering. Gain of 10 yards, and Georgia keeps their drive alive. Tally sets up just a little short hook route, hook it at the outside. Hummings comes back and makes a nice move on the ball. Good catch by Hummings. They've got three receivers here at Georgia. I think for the first time in a long time, they can really catch the ball with Hummings, Maxwell, and Marshall. Opening moments, third quarter from Oxford, Mississippi, Boston Hemingway Stadium. Maxwell in motion. Play fake. And Tally 
he's going to have to try to run it out of cover. Slides into second base about the 48-yard line. Sean Cobb is there. Good decision that time. Trying to bring, drag the tight end across. If you're playing Georgia, you got to take that away. And it's just a matter of how the defense plans on taking the tight end away from Georgia. And then what does it open up? And if they're going to stick a linebacker on it, it's going to open up the middle. And that time they had the flanker run on the inside route. They'll throw the ball down the middle in the second half. Time. Second down six. Tally running left, throwing on the run. That's a tough play for any quarterback, even one as athletic as Greg Tally. That goes incomplete, intended for Maxwell. It'll be third down six. Third and six. Georgia trying to develop a more balanced offense this year, and they're almost forced to. They have to. It's not a question of whether they want to do it or not. A young and experienced line. If your line's not as solid, it's a lot easier to develop a passing game than it is a running game. Third and six from the 48-yard line of the Bulldogs. Pally throwing under pressure. Pocket was caving in as he got rid of it. Tried to get it to wear out here. About 48 of Ole Miss. But Ole Miss holds, and now we'll have the punt. What's the man from Alligator, Mississippi, Tony Bennett? Coming up the field from a down position, working on Kurt Mull. And a cast Mull aside, takes the inside charge, but the damage had already been done by the time Tony Bennett got there. There's Pat Coleman, number three. Back to the punt. Joey Hester. It's an airborne, fair catch. That's at the 16-yard line. And Ole Miss leading 10-7 will get an opportunity to go on offense. 37-yard punt by Joey Hester, and he had the good hang time for no return. When you're a company that makes building products, you get real familiar with trees. Georgia Pacific has known these trees for over 50 years. We planted most of them. You know them as our double-sanded southern gold plywood or our designer paneling. But GP also has products like shingles, nails, gypsum, which don't come from trees at all. So whether the building supplies you need grow on trees or not, ask for GP. That's all you need to know. It's fueled the victories of Super Bowl champions and Sandlot superstars. It's as welcome on a hot cinder track as a cold sheet of ice. It is unsurpassed at supplying fluids, minerals, and energy. It goes beyond refreshment. It produces results. It's everywhere athletes compete. It's sports. It's Gatorade. Portions of today's game are brought to you by Valvoline Motor Oil. People who know use Valvoline. And by Bush Beer. The beer with a taste as smooth as its name. First down, 10 Ole Miss from their own 16-yard lines, and Georgia with five defensive backs in the game now. Darnell been very successful through the air. Ben Smith, who has a bad hamstring, is in there in the Georgia secondary. Darnell, plenty of time. Then it caves in. He's going to have to run. Steps out of bounds just across the 20-yard line. Here's what Ole Miss did with the ball in the first half. They drove it 80 yards for a TD, 61 yards for a field goal. Then, after a 66-yard drive, uh, had to punt it away. Missed the field goal, and the half ended. Ben Smith there, a veteran defensive back, a corner for Georgia a couple of years. Now they've got him playing on the inside, but right now he's playing with a full hamstring. Second down, five. Darnell with eye contact for Willie Green, but the ball contact goes to Randy Baldwin out to about the 24-yard line. Cowan's made the stop. Sometimes you see that quarterback look out to one of the flankers or the, or the uh, wide receivers because they've both spotted something in the defensive alignment, and they'll just toss one out there, but not this time. Third down now, Ben Smith comes out of the football game. Robert Bell in. Four down lineman trying to create some pressure on Johnny Darnell trying to force him into an air. This is third down two. <laughs> Willie Green can't hold on to it. 
Willie's got five catches for 136 yards, but he's had several significant non-catches today, one of which could very easily have been for a touchdown in the first half. He looks like he's moving a little bit slower, Bob. I noticed at the end of the half he pulled up, and I think his leg might be bothering him. I wouldn't be surprised to see them move Pat Coleman into the slot, who is their best possession receiver and route runner. Childers into punt. He had a 55-yard punt. They've corrected it officially to a 57-yard punt now, which is career best in the first half. This one's another good one. Arthur Marshall driven all the way back to his own 27-yard line. Ole Miss is there to nail him at the 24. And that was a 50-yard punt. But Childers is really hammering that ball to the Ole Miss Rebels today. We have 11.23 to go in the third quarter. Ole Miss is leading it by three, and here comes Rodney Hampton. Georgia has been able to gain only 53 yards on the ground all day, and they need this man. Remember, he had arthroscopic surgery just six days ago. But he's an amazing man, Bob. Great team player. Very unselfish. The play fake, and Ole Miss drew when they faked it to Rodney Hampton. And drilled hard out of bounds at the 30th tally. Knocked all the way over here to the what used to be the track at Vaught Hemingway Stadium. This is real close to hitting him out of bounds, but I don't think so. Pete Harris. Pete is Harris coming. Chris Broom could have helped out there a little bit, but he's got contact before tally clears. He's still fair game at that point. <laughs> Don't let him get out of bounds. Don't let him get out of bounds. Let me at him. <laughs> he got him just in the nick of time. No penalty. Good call. Good no call. Second down five from the 30 now. Hampton in there for the Bulldogs. Here comes Rodney's first carry of the day. That's about three yards. In 1987, when Georgia played over here, Rodney Hampton gained a Georgia record 290 all-purpose yards versus Ole Miss. That was in 87. And he's been a great back, and uh, as Ray Goff was talking about him, you know, his eyes started to glow because he's the type of player you want as a superstar. Not self-centered at all, not concerned about the headlines for himself, but more concerned about the, the success of his team. This is third down one from the 34. And they go to their money man. Will he be able to get it? Yes. And there you see the talent of Hampton. The Ole Miss defenders were there, and Hampton got the first down. Once again, the Georgia offense with Nicky Pitts in that tight end position. Number 46 firing off on Tony Bennett. Bennett stands him up, but can't make the play. When you take on Rodney Hampton, you better take him head on. You're not going to grab him and pull him down. A good job by Pitts, too. Kind of stalemated Bennett. Hampton getting a little helmet work there momentarily. A little help from his friend, Sean Hummings. First down, 10 at the 39-yard line. Hampton again, the workhorse. Look at those moves. Out to the 44-yard line. Remember, Alfonso Ellis also had the arthroscopic surgery on Wednesday. They're starting fullback. The man, as Tim pointed out, is will be making your knockdown blocks for that running game. So Georgia really playing at a disadvantage without their two, their best blocking fullback and their best running tailback. And Brian Cleveland, Larry Ware, Max Strong have been filling in here so far this afternoon. This is second down five. Hampton's out of there right now, but that's because they're working on his face mask. Complete over the middle to Kirk Warner. The bruising tight end takes it to the 46-yard line. First down, Georgia, gain of 10, 9.31 to go in the third quarter. Last week, Ole Miss had Alabama in their grasp. Everything went right in the first three possessions, and they certainly don't want to let this one get away from them. I'm sure that's what they talked about at halftime. Talked about playing with confidence, playing without the cushion of the lead, playing as though you were behind, playing with a sense of urgency. At the 46-yard line, first down, Georgia. That's Marshall in motion. Here's the toss to Cleveland, who just gets leveled by Pete Harris. Pete Harris having himself a whale of a ball game. Sophomore from Homestead, Florida, number 49. 49, you watch the uh, 50, Mo going out, Broom taking on Bennett, Strong leading the way, 
Pete Harris a good angle. Cleveland trying to get back underneath it, just couldn't make the break in time. Seventh play of the drive for Georgia, second down eight from the 44. Pitch to Cleveland, takes it outside. To the 35-yard line of Ole Miss, and Georgia's running game starting to get untracked, a gain of 10 that time. Rodney Hampton came in and carried the ball briefly, three carries to 14 yards, went out so they could work on his face mask, and the running game got going. Now they're looking at the hand of Rodney Hampton. Mercy. That last play, a great block by Will Colley. Got the defensive lineman hooked. Created the lane for Cleveland. I'm putting the helmet back on Rodney Hampton. He may be back in here shortly. On first down at the 34 of Ole Miss. Talley takes it upstairs. Look for the tight end, Kirk Warner with a great catch. He'd been bumped prior to the play. Goes out of bounds at the 10. That was Godwin covering. And Georgia now will have it first down at the 10-yard line of Ole Miss. A gain of 24 yards. Tally 7 out of 10 for 90 yards. Play fake. Linebackers suck up. Now Warner's back there working man-to-man -man on Chauncey Godwin. It's a zone, but by that time, Godwin's got a man-to-man. And he just walled him off, used his body to get position on the football. It's first and goal at the nine. The ball just inside the ten. Hampton back in there, number seven to tailback. Maxwell in motion. Fumble and fall. Tally, uh, Tally falls on it. Folly towels on it <laughs> at the 11. I guess we're going to say it. Yeah, that's one of my anyway. Don't steal my stuff. Well, he you talls on it. I've never seen him do the tall on it before. <laughs> yeah, loss of a yard on the play. Everybody gets a little bit anxious. Uh, ben Lane, Jack Swan, the center. They all critical situation. Maybe the ball comes up a little early and uh, the quarterback may speed up his cadence a little bit. Just something to throw him off a little bit. Fumble Jordan. Who uses Valvoline motor oil? People like leading race car driver Al Unser Jr. If a driver ever told you, no, I don't get scared, I'm not scared, he's lying to you. The technology that goes into the Indy car is second to none. Over half the field at Indy is using Valvoline. If there was a motor oil out there that was better, it would be in my car. People who know use Valvoline. Got a thirst. Give me the ball, give me the ball, give me the ball. You know what you need. Give me the ball. Fluids and minerals fast. Give me the ball. Energy for hard working muscles. Nothing better. Give me some of that Gatorade. An update for you on Vandy in Florida. The Gators are rolling along. Another touchdown. This is a one-play drive. Kyle Morse throws it high in the air, right into the hands of Ernie Mills, who outraces everybody, goes into the end zone. The Gators are threatening again. They're on top 27-3. Back to Bob and Tim. Well, Kyle Morris unloading at the University of Florida today, and Gators doing likewise to the Commodores. Tally throwing to Rodney Hampton, the one-handed catch not made. So it was the proverbial screen down there, both wide receivers running routes to the inside, trying to get open, but uh, the greater focus is on trying to run into somebody else's defender. And uh, so trying to get Hampton open across to the outside, and the ball is just thrown behind them. They had it. Third down and goal from the 11. Hampton, by the way, sprained his middle finger. And that's why he was out shortly. They have affected him on that pass catch of the tip. Now Talley's going to look for him again. Almost picked off. 38, Chucky Mullins, the nickel back. You pay your nickel, you get your extra back. And that's what he was in there for. And he did his job well. Georgia doesn't convert. Good job of coverage here by Ole Miss. We're going to see it on the wide angle. 
Who's inside the jam? They're trying to hit the, the back on the arrow and up. They just can't get it in there. Muncie goes up in the air. And Georgia is fortunate there that the ball was just knocked down. 29-yard field goal attempt by John Casey. He missed from 37 earlier. An attempt to tie this game. And he does. The game is tied at 10 with 7 minutes, 28 seconds to go in the third quarter from Oxford, Mississippi. There's a motor oil that talks about world-class protection. Catchy phrase. But Valvoline is recommended by name in the owner's manuals of these world-class cars. The other motor oil is not. Whatever you drive, Valvoline makes the highest quality motor oil recommended by any car manufacturer. Around the world, people who know, use Valvoline. There's a difference when you're flying. Where are we going today? We're going to Grandma's house. someone who shows how much What's they care. I'm not going to go anywhere without you. A smile, a tone of voice, and the willingness to try. When you love to fly, it shows. Time. Ole Miss led 10 to nothing, and now it's not at 10. It's time to see what you know about SEC football. Brought to you by Valvoline Motor Oil. People who know use Valvoline. What SEC football star holds the NCAA record for most touchdown scored in one game? Manning, Walker, Jackson, or Showboat Boykin? Did I give it away at all the way I said Showboat Boykin? Possible. Ole Miss scored seven touchdowns versus Mississippi State in 1951. Showboat Boykin. Named after St. Showboat. <laughs> seven and a half to go for the quarter. Casey drives this in and out of the end zone, so Ole Miss will have to put it in play from their own 20-yard line. Darnell is thrown for 196 yards at halftime, hasn't gained any more yardage. He did complete one pass, but it was for no gain in the first half of this third quarter. Georgia's got Ben Smith back into the game. That's the Georgia scoring drive there. There's Ben Smith back into the game trying to shore up that nicked up secondary. And in the first part of the third quarter, the Georgia secondary has been playing better. Now five defensive backs in there again for Georgia. Darnell's going to keep trying it until he sees what he can do with it. Incomplete out here at the 28-yard line. Rich Jibia just couldn't hold on to it. One of the ways in which Richard Bell has decided to stop Mrs. Ole Miss's success is to go with five defensive backs and Kirk Douglas back in the game, and he and Demetrius <laughs> center their attention on Gibeah for a second. There's Richard Bell, and he's the one, one that's pulling the string in this Georgia defense. On second down 10, Darnell can't find anybody. And he goes at the 18 or 19-yard line. The Georgia getting the coverage, and now the pressure against Darnell. At nearly 200 yards at the half, but nothing happening in the air for Ole Miss right now. They may have to try to go back to the ground a little bit. One of the, thing, one of the things that coaches enjoy doing against the middle defense running the draw is trying to get people man to man underneath and they just want a little bit more quickness in there from their linebackers Matt McCormick uh, probably not as good against the uh, in the secondary penalty marker dropped it's going to be against Ole Miss prior to the snap of the ball Dick Burleson heads the officiating crew here today he's the man in the white hat the referee so the dead ball foul encroachment on the offense, lining up in the neutral zone. Third down. Dick Burleson was the referee, by the way, in that controversial lost second, you might call it, in the LSU-Florida game last week. And Billy Brewers questioning that call, as you can see by the expression on his face. Nevertheless, it's third down 16 from the 14th. Again, coughs up the ball at the nine-yard 
line, but it was down. He did not fumble it. Goldberg is the man who got it. It is Ole Miss ball. Great pressure by the Georgia front. Let's watch it mark here. Cowan staying at home, turning it back into the inside. And the ball pops out after Darnell lands on the ground. Good coverage by the Georgia secondary. And a fine job of adjusting by Richard Bell and Dickie Clark and the rest of that Georgia defensive staff. Childers with a 57 and then a 50-yard punt. He needs a long one here from his own end zone. It's not going to be very long either. Marshall has to run way up here for a fair catch, and Georgia with excellent field position at the 43. When Childers needed it most, he could get only 34 yards. The Bulldogs, who drove the ball 64 yards for the field goal to tie the game, now have an exceptional opportunity to take the lead for the first time in this game here at Oxford. Good job by Marshall, Bob. A short punt. We've seen a lot of deep receivers let that ball bounce, and then it goes another 20 yards. He hustled up and made the catch. On the first down, 43-yard line. Play fake to Hampton, who's in the pass pattern now. The tally goes to his tight end, Kirk Warner, who got the foot in bounds at the 38. Warner's had five catches for 64 yards today, so the scores around the nation. Florida State really lay a lick on Virginia Tech, Pittsburgh for that front of Navy. Colorado continues to roll. There are people who think Colorado's the best team in the United States, not Miami or Notre Dame, Nebraska. That's really there. Georgia Tech leading Clemson. Look at the body of the screen there. The ACC, Tech got their first ACC win in many, many games that week. Now leading Clemson. This is Rodney Hampton getting just a couple to the 34. And what makes a great running back anyway? And there's a couple of things I think that are involved. And no great running back doesn't have excellent feet. The ability to change direction and get to full speed quickly. That great burst. And another thing that you, a couple other things you have to have is good vision to be able to see the hole. And you have to have some guts to take it inside and where those holes are. Third down two. Side, Hampton with the quick feet and about everything that Tim told you about there to get the first down for Georgia. Ten yards. We appreciate Rodney showing what Tim was telling about. Let's look at it again. And uh, Cleveland leading the way. Mull clears out and DeFore clear out the defenders and Rodney hops through there. You can tell that he's hurting. You can tell he's not running at full speed. Still averaging more than five yards per carry. First down, 10 from the 24 down. And again, changes direction, but no, not this time. Doug Jacobs, the first man back there, number 94. Jacobs, 6'8", 265 pounds. You see him tower above Tony Bennett, who's 6'2", there as well. And that's a pretty formidable front, Doug Jacobs. They've slid him down for this game. They've moved him down into the inside, and they're playing that four-man line look, but he and Pritchett playing over the guards. Second down, 15. Georgia now at the 29 of Ole Miss. Play fake to Hampton. Kelly throws it back out here to Hampton. Spinning, diving to the 25-yard line. A lot of excitement on that play with not quite enough yardage for the first down. Matter of fact, he only got about, what, four on it? A great play, especially against the pursuing Ole Miss defense. Tally comes out of it, and Jacobs is on him. Bennett wasn't fooled, was blocked as the ball was in there. You can do that as long as the ball's thrown behind the line of scrimmage. And look at this. Takes a hit, takes a hit, takes a hit. Keeps spinning and turning and fighting and churning. That's the kind of play that Ray Goff needs from his Bulldogs. Balance and power from Hampton. Third down 11. Here comes Ole Miss. Intercepted at the 10-yard line. Ole Miss ball. What a play by Chauncey Godwin. This is good offense and good defense, Bob. We'll see it when we come back. You're looking sharp, you're looking good, you've come so far, and we know how to make the 
most of who you are, father to son, it's what we've always done, Gillette. The Gillette Atra Plus system and Gillette Foamy Shave Cream, together the best a man can get. Beginning November 4th, TBS presents a major television event. Ten days of classic movies celebrating an American movie legend. Hallelujah! John Wayne, the man, the movies, the hero. We're on the threshold of the most crucial day of our times. Ten days you'll never forget. Ten days of the Duke. Beginning November 4th, only on TBS. And here it is, Greg Talley sees the safety blitz, the strong safety lined up there coming. He checks to this route, trying to get it to his receiver right in there. Godwin playing defense. You want to prevent the inside route, and here's what happened. Talley lets it go. He's got Chris Mitchell in his face, throws it on time, but Godwin is in perfect position. Big play by Chauncey Godwin. That was great drawing there, Tim. You drew an inverted snowman. Did you realize that? I <laughs> First down 10 from the nine yard line. I understand what you're saying. That's the, the whole point of it. <laughs> 306 to go in the third quarter. Baldwin diving out to about the 14 yard line. Hiawatha Berry. He's been uh, some he's been nicked up with some injuries, but he's been a disappointment at defensive tackle for Georgia. Disappointing to himself and to the team. He has not been performing as they expected him to this year. Well, but they've got Mike uh, Steele and George Brewer that have come on, and of course Goldberg is playing as good as he's ever played. That they've kind of taken up the slack there, but you'd like to give Goldberg a rest. Second down, five from the 14. Georgia with two turnovers in this game today. Darnell right over the middle. Willie Green got this one and down to the 40-yard line. Georgia comes up with a ball. with a hamstring was there to rip it loose from Willie Green. Green working on Al Jackson here. It's a zone. Jackson releases him inside. Target trying to get there. Ben Smith reaches in from the outside and just as you said, Bob, just pulled it out of there. I don't know how you saw it. With assistance from, assistance from our extra set of eyes here. That's why you bring him in four sets of eyes. First and ten from the 39. On the left side, Larry Ware drives to the 32-yard line. Preston Jones has gone back in at quarterback for the Bulldogs. By the way, that's the first time Ole Miss has turned the ball over today after committing seven turnovers in the 62-27 loss to Alabama. And none of the ones last week were as pretty as that one. It's, uh, it was just fumbles. Good hard-hitting, good tough defense by Alabama, but they surrendered the ball easier than you'd like to see. Second down three. Here's the pitch to Hamilton. Stops, changes direction. Look at this job of running the ball. To near the 25-yard line. Seven tackles for Sean Cobb now. Hampton has seven carries, 29 yards on the afternoon. The thing you have to like about Hampton is although he stops and thinks about reversing his field, his eyes are always upfield, always looking for that daylight upfield. His knee locked on him against Tennessee last week with the loose cartilage in there four times in the game. His knee locked up. The trainers and Rodney Hampton would shake the cartilage loose, and then he returned to play. Now that's playing the pain. Imagine. First and 10 from the 26 now. A handoff to the fullback. Just inside the 26 was Brian Cleveland. Tied at 10. Try to say Ray Goff tries to say. Sneak a quick one in there. Trying to get that line going with Rodney Hampton when he's in the football game. Obviously, you're aware of where he is, and they try to get a trap in there behind the toss to him. And often, oftentimes, you can rip one for 20 yards with a play like that. We've seen Georgia fullbacks do that multiple times over the past several years. Second down eight from the 24 yard line. Hampton tries the middle. But right there is Doug Jacobs. 
You talked earlier, Tim, about the way you got to get Rodney Hampton is before he gets moving, and you got to hit him head on straight up. And Jacob just shook off the blocker and nailed him. He ran through Wayne Muckle, and as we mentioned, Jacobs is playing down inside. He beats the block to the inside and comes up with Hampton. Just a fine, fine play by the young giant. Third down 10 from the 26-yard line and the quarter ticking down to an end. After three, it is tied at 10. Georgia is on a drive. There's a motor oil that says it's engineered for today's smaller cars, like sports cars. But is that motor oil the first choice of the members of the Sports Car Club of America? No. Valvoline is the first choice of the members of the Sports Car Club of America. Valvoline makes the highest quality motor oil recommended by any automobile manufacturer. People who know, use Valvoline. I'm Linda Ellerby. If you talk with people around America, you'll find a lot who like the taste of Maxwell House coffee. They say it tastes rich, like these people. I like the Maxwell House. I like the rich taste. I like it a lot. It has a deep, rich flavor that really comes through. Maxwell House, it has a rich flavor the way I like my coffee to taste. It had a very rounded taste, very rich. Oh, it's that full, rich taste that's great when I go fishing at 5 o'clock in the morning. People say Maxwell House has a good, rich taste. Have you tasted it yourself? There's a special breed of people who do battle day after day. Their arena, the business world. Their territory, the road. They are the road warriors. Ray? Ray Cave. On the road again, huh? Three cities this week. He's very handsome sales director for land. Hi. And Howard Johnson is the place the road warrior chooses when he gets ready for the road. Again and again. Howard Johnson, home of the road warrior. Vaught-Hemingway Stadium, Oxford, Mississippi. A beautiful northern Mississippi afternoon. About 80 degrees. It's tied at 10. The SEC. Sound and fury. Hampton, right side. Drives to about the 17-yard line. Pete Harris with his seventh tackle of the afternoon. Georgia offensive line has been improving every game for the Bulldogs. Now look at Kurt Warner on Tony Bennett. That's as good a job as he's done all day long. He got his head around to the outside and walled him off. You don't have to push him back off the ball. Just keep him out of the action. Good job by Kurt Warner. This is fourth and one. Georgia is not going to go for it. They are going for the what would be three-point field goal to take the lead in the game. Fourth and one from the 17. Casey gets the field goal. He did not hit it well. A field goal distance of 34 yards, and Georgia leads it 13 to 10. That wasn't a work of art, but he still gets the three points. The ball John Casey's interested in. Exactly. A strong leg, John Casey. That's one of the benefits of having your dad as the conditioning coach, right? You get good strength in your body. His dad, of course, was a player here. But the problem that John has had, if he has one kicking, is not accuracy, it's height on the ball. And I think then he was more concerned about getting the ball up more than he was driving the football. You know, that's the most you've ever talked about a kicker in a positive vein. <laughs> You're really making progress. <laughs> you even talked about how he kicked it. I love that. I wanted you to get grow to that. <laughs> that level of analysis. <laughs> Defensive backs and former players just don't have a lot to say sometimes about tickets. By the way, there's John Casey, but uh, uh, as they say, the coach's son, he went to Clark Central High School in Athens with Willie Green, who plays for Ole Miss. They're the deep backs for Ole Miss. three field goals today. Ole Miss will now take over trailing for the first time in this ball game. What do you say, it is time for the first time today. Good. Which, you're talking to a bulldog, that's, that's a problem. Well, I can tell he's smiling. I just can't tell if he really needs it. 
14-11 to go in this game, and the Bulldogs of Georgia have taken a three-point lead. Darnell over the middle, almost picked off, but it is complete. Out to about the 28-yard line to Rich Jibia. Kirk Douglas is the man who almost grabbed it for Georgia. There's a penalty marker on the field. Check the call here from Dick Burleson. It was a gain of seven yards, and the penalty marker is in the Georgia defensive secondary. Dead ball foul, personal foul on the defense. First down. Let's look at Demetrius Douglas and Kirk Douglas. Kirk Douglas, man-to-man -man on Gibeah. You can bet your booties they've told him to pay attention to that tight end. Demetrius Douglas dropping the help on the wide receiver. But obviously what had occurred downfield as a defensive back was running with a wide receiver was just a little extracurricular activity. They probably saw the defensive back part of it. Like that was the first first down of the half for Ole Miss. Darnell going deep, looking for Coleman. Overthrows everybody down around the 20-yard line. Pat Coleman, the fastest Rebel receiver and probably the best Rebel, Rebel receiver, the most uh, consistent, I think the most reliable, runs the great routes, excellent after-the-catch ability, has almost been ignored so far to this point, and I think you can look for Old Miss to start getting the ball to Coleman more. Second down, 10 from the 42. Here's the handoff to Ronnie McKinney. It's just maybe a yard over on the left side. Barry with the stop for Georgia. Red Parker on the sideline. And the Ole Miss cheerleaders. Oxford, Mississippi, one of the most beautiful collegiate campuses in America. Surprised we haven't seen more of Randy Baldwin since the first quarter, Bob. Got off to a good start. As we understand, there is no injury. They just aren't playing very much today. Willie Green couldn't come up with a ball. Darnell had to throw that under a lot of pressure. And I think John Darnell better start looking someplace else because Willie Green doesn't look like he's running full speed to me. Al Jackson in his face trying to keep him out of the middle but you can see that Willie Green is not accelerating off the break really powering out of there ball thrown low as John Darnell was hassled Arthur Marshall back to take the punt from Childers Childers had punts of 57 50 and then 34 yards today on this one. Fair catches it at the 22-yard line. Bulldogs lead 13 to 10, 12, 55 remaining in the game, and that was only a 35-yard punt. of today's game are brought to you by Howard Johnson, where the road warrior gets ready for the road. Words there? Truck? Anybody hear that? Side? All right, we're back 13 to 10. Georgia leading Ole Miss with 12.55 remaining in this ballgame. At the 22-yard line. Preston Jones continues at quarterback for Georgia. Tally started, played the first quarter. Jones came in in the second. Couldn't get much going. You see Shaw's warming up on the sideline there. He's the redshirt freshman. He played against Alabama last week for through for 56 yards. He's a redshirt freshman from Senatobia, Mississippi. 
another good quarterback. Ole Miss has a couple of good ones behind their senior John Darnell. Chows and Tom Luke, the redshirt freshman from Gulfport, Mississippi. Preston Jones pitches it to Rodney Hampton, looking for that crease. Doesn't get the crease, but gets about seven yards. Dan Wigley makes the stop for Ole Miss. Chris Froome getting some good movement on that right side. Hampton just couldn't get back inside the block. But it certainly does make a difference in pro from a productivity standpoint, yes, but more from a confidence standpoint to have a guy like Rodney Hampton in there. And it also makes the linebackers and defensive line a lot more aware of the run, and that reduces the pass rush and uh, limits the linebacker's ability to get into the pass coverage. This is second down four. Hampton. Doesn't get much that time. Reggie Parrott makes the stop. Daryl Smith had penetrated the first man back there, but Hampton sidestepped him. So we've got another conversion. Third down three coming up for Georgia. Only five out of 12 today are the Bulldogs on third down conversion attempts. And Bennett back into the game now. Jacobs Pritchett back into the game. From the 29 yard line, third down three. Bobbles the ball, picked it up on the run, dives forward, and may have picked up the first down. Well, that's the luck of the bounce with that spheroid. It is a elliptical spheroid, isn't it? Tim, you're right. The, you're the you know, I, well, you know, I am homeschooling my kids, and that's what it is exactly. <laughs> One of the most distinct descriptions I've ever heard of it, right there. It is first down, Georgia. 11.26 to go in this ballgame. Ray Goff trying to snap a two-game losing streak. Georgia won the first two, then lost 24-20 to South Carolina and 17-14 to Tennessee. Ole Miss has done likewise. They won their first three, then lost 24-17 to Arkansas and 62-27 to Alabama. Cleveland out of the tailback spot to the 36-yard line. With that three-point lead, can't afford to run the ball a little more. Uh, now try to get something going that way. Yeah, and you do want to keep your defense off the field. Talking to Ray Goff yesterday, uh, you had mentioned that someone had complimented him on his team looking good against Tennessee and South Carolina. And South Even Carolina they lost. Right, yeah. And Ray's comment was, yeah, well. Looking good gets you fired. We need to win. So he understands the seriousness of this football game. Even though he's a first-year coach at Georgia, remember, he was on the Dooley staff for eight years as an assistant. So we're not talking about a rookie in the truest sense of the word. And Preston Jones calls a timeout to go over to talk to Ray Goff. There's a penalty marker in the secondary. The clock, 25-second clock, may have run out. see the team back up to the line of scrimmage the reason that they didn't call the timeout is the official said the 25 second clock had elapsed prior to Jones getting the timeout call so now we're going to go ahead with the play five yard penalty delay of game against Georgia second down 11 from the 32 Jones tried to save it with the timeout call but it came too late the 31 yard line Kelvin Pritchett number 92 and up front Old Miss just getting great penetration sliding Jacobs down and Pritchett in you see Bennett working outside they're going to trap him to the outside he closes well Pritchett pursues from the inside and Jacobs had disrupted the timing of the play earlier than that. Five defensive backs in there on the third down 11 for Ole Miss. 
the defensive backs didn't have a chance to come up because Doug Jacobs leveled Brian Cleveland with 9.32 to go in the game. Georgia leading by three. Ole Miss is going to get the ball back. The Ole Miss defense has played well in the big plays today, led by that man, Doug Jacobs. Best game we've seen him play. Well, it always helps playing next to an all-star, and certainly Tony Bennett is all SEC quality, and he gets the attention, which usually you, leaves you man-to-man. -man. Joey Hester. Got that backward bounce. The ball checked up on him. He couldn't get it to turn over. The nose wouldn't turn over, and it bounces back to the 49. Only a 31-yard punt. Territory, the road. They are the road warriors. Ray? Ray Cave. Yep. On the road again, huh? Three cities this week. Hey, Mary Hansen, sales director for Land. Hi. And Howard Johnson is the place the road warrior chooses when he gets ready for the road. Again and again. Howard Johnson, home of the road warriors. Georgia's run 36 offensive plays. Ole Miss only 11. This is only the 12th offensive play of this half by Ole Miss. Georgia still has come away with only two field goals for all that possession of the ball. Darnell completes it. Virginia down the sidelines and out of bounds at the 44-yard line of Georgia. Gain of 17-yard line. 17 yards. At this time, Darnell starting to work to the outside. Georgia becoming very conscious about the middle of the field, trying to keep receivers out of there. Gibeah finds an opening in the weak side flat. Runs it upfield for a good game. 8.49 remaining in this game. Georgia leading it by three. It's at the 44 of the Bulldogs. Baldwin, nowhere to run. A couple of yards, Demetrius Douglas leads him about the 42-yard line. Time remaining in this game, eight and a half minutes. Billy Brewer's team has lost two in a row. Stop that skid. Driving in the fourth quarter. Darnell with only about five seconds to get this playoff now. The check off, clock down to two, but he gets the snap. The screen pass to the left side, Phil Penn. Georgia played it beautifully. Cowens was out there to meet him. Loss on the play. So now third down 11, and the Ole Miss offense has just stopped Tim here in the second half. Georgia's been playing that nickel package a lot of the time. And remember, Darnell had 196 yards. And he was yeah. throwing the ball down the field. Uh, you know, again, from what I've seen of John Darnell, he's a good athlete. When he's rolling, he's really hot. When he falls off the wagon, then things stop. Darnell's rolling to the right this time. It is complete to Baldwin. He stays in bounds and dives down to about the 33. Randy Baldwin. was towering from the sidelines to Darnell about the receiver open downfield when he dumped it in the flat. This time, nothing there, so he's got to dump it in the flat. Now Baldwin makes the play. He's got the ball. Now here is where he makes the first down. If, he make, if they make it, they're measuring for it right now, but that good extra effort is going to be what earned it for him. 
stretch out the chain. Here looks like he got it. Now the line for the football. First down, Ole Miss. At the 34-yard line of Georgia. The score, Georgia 13, Ole Miss 10. 7.15 to go in this game. Billy Brewer trying to get some emotion into his Ole Miss offensive group. Inside the 30, Matt McCormick makes the stop. It's great to mix in the option in the first, first down against five defensive backs because you're, you're putting more physical pressure on those smaller people. And you try to take advantage of what the defense is giving you. If they've got five quick people on the field, then what they're, what they're going to be a little bit light in is the power game. Six from the 30. Darnell fakes to the fullback. Wanted to pitch it out here to Baldwin, but Mo Lewis had Baldwin covered. All Darnell could do would be turn it up there at the line of scrimmage. And run right into the grasp of Kirk Douglas, who did a fine job of playing this. Goldberg playing two gap, moving down the line of scrimmage. He's there. Douglas comes around the corner, makes the stop. Barry there. And as you mentioned, Mo Lewis ready to pounce on Baldwin if he received the pitch. That was Mo 57 right there in the bottom right of your screen. Third down six from the 30. Fumbles the ball. It belongs to Georgia. Hiawatha Barry. Seven yard line, the man who popped it loose was 57 Mo Lewis. Come on, along and head for the mountains of Bush. Big head for the mountains, it's cold and it's smooth. And it's waiting for you. Come on, head for the mountains of Bush. Bear. Bush. Bear. It's a feeling of power, of substance and style. You know that you're on your way. The great American road belongs. Okay, John Darnell has got an option route. This is the man that's going to be stopping that route. This Raps is coming out of the backfield, making a decision, breaks to the outside. He's covered. Darnell has nowhere to go with the football. And Mo Lewis comes up with the fumble. It's that man coming out of the backfield. Kirk Douglas sits down, jams, run with him. Now Darnell is flushed out of the pocket. The ball is shaken loose. And Hiawatha Berry comes up with the football. See it again. Mo Lewis fighting his way through Goldberg there. Mo Lewis knocks it loose and Hiawatha covered the ball. Greg Talley back in at quarterback for Georgia. Pitches to Hampton with that right power sweep. Hampton drives it across the 40 to about the 43-yard line. 5.33 to go in this game. Georgia leading it 13 to 10. And it's times like this, you're glad you have a running offense. You're glad, you're glad you can move the ball on the ground because you want that clock ticking away. Hampton has 54 yards, 13 carries, all in the second half. Six days ago, Rodney Hampton had arthroscopic knee surgery. Incredible performance today. Tally's going to keep it. Following Hampton, throws the block, and then, wham! Was it Pete Harris? Just leveling Greg Talley. Yes, number 49, Pete Harris has a sack and 10 tackles today. Earlier in the game, Pete Harris had chased Talley out of bounds. And Greg, 
They're a little bit bigger up here than they were in Valdosta. <laughs> Who? That didn't hit like that guy from Warner Robins, right? Good hit by Pete Harris. Good, aggressive, clean, sharp football. And Pete Harris is just a, an average-sized linebacker, 6 feet, 225, average <laughs> for a major college linebacker. But he hits like he's even bigger than that. What a game he's had. Between Doug Jacobs and Pete Harris, they have been outstanding for Ole Miss today. Hampton, at the line of scrimmage. Very little game, maybe a yard. 4.25 to go in the game, and number 49, Pete Harris. 11 tackles. Let's watch Pete work here, number 49. Drifts to the left, staying behind Hampton, and boom, stays at home. Hampton tries to cut it back inside, but just very effective. Good arm wrap, got him on the ground. That's the kind of defense Billy Brewer likes to see. Freshman Nikki Pitts in it, tied in for Georgia on second down eight. Pitts is number 46. Looks like the right side of the offensive line, somebody moved for Georgia over there. Penalty markers went down before the ball got snapped. 353 remaining. On offense, dead ball foul. Russell to four. Dead ball foul. False start from the interior line of the offense. Repeat the downs. Clock at 3.53, Georgia leading it by three. Move it back here to the 44-yard line of the Bulldogs. I think Ray Goff is handling the pressure well, uh, and uh, obviously he's been under some pressure. Folks at Georgia not used to losing two in a, in a row, but I think they understand that he does have a young football team and he's building for the future. Second down, 13, Hampton. Right up the middle. Rodney Hampton is thrown out of bounds at the 33 of Ole Miss, finally by Tony Bennett. He gains 20 on the play. He just popped it loose, and Rodney Hampton has 75 yards on the afternoon ball in the second half. Look at the eyes of this great running back. Here we go. He's off and running. Cuts it up through. Now watch him freeze Chauncey Godwin. He just freezes him right there, runs through that tackle, and you can tell that you can tell he's bothered by that knee. He's not able to get the top speed, but what a competitor. It's like saying your Porsche can only go 137 <laughs> miles an hour instead of 147. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> but he certainly has made the difference. They were Cleveland is a good back where I'm surprised we haven't seen more of him but uh, you can tell that offensive line has confidence in Hampton they know when he's got the football they got a chance to take it all away well Georgia Tech laying it on Clemson today at Clemson Hampton out of the game right now Cleveland then tries the left side and Cleveland gets to about the 28 yard line Thompson made the stop. Clock is down to 2.30. George leads it by three. And Billy Brewer is seeing this one slip away unless some turnover happens. Florida State really getting untracked. Being Virginia Tech. Virginia Tech's a pretty good club this year. Florida hammering Vanderbilt at halftime. Maryland bouncing back after the loss to Georgia Tech last week. Boston College off the front in the third quarter. This is third down four. Big play for Ole Miss defense here. The pitch back to fumble. Ole Miss ball. The aforementioned turnover happened. Mitchell came away with it for Ole Miss. Conservative toss, and he just never got a handle on it. Callie put it right there. Cleveland just couldn't find the football. Chris Mitchell comes up with it. That young man, three interceptions, three passes broken up, and a critical fumble recovery right there. Now Ole Miss, first down 10 from their own 36. Ole Miss led it 10 nothing in the first quarter, hasn't scored since. Oh no. There's a complete to Coleman. He's a speedster, little five second right out of bounds the 49-yard line. Stopping the clock at 2.16. And this is the man that's going to see the football 
on this drive. Pat Coleman. Now he's Mr. Clutch for Old Miss. Makes the catch, holds up short, and has the wisdom and the field sense to get out of bounds. Stop the clock. First down at the 49-yard line. Darnell completes it again, this time to Jimmy. He is knocked down at about the 48 or 49 yard line of Georgia. Mike Jones with the stop on the tight end. Clock down to 204 and counting. Ole Miss with two timeouts remaining. They trail by three. Inside two minutes. Well, you, you've got Al Jackson on one side with Chris Wilson injured. Jackson's playing there and George Wynn on the other side. Quick toss out here to Coleman on the sideline. And Coleman out of bounds at the 38 yard line. Needs to get near the 40 for the first down. And as talented as Al Jackson is, I would expect Old Miss to try to get into the matchup of Coleman on Jackson. He got the first down. That stopped the clock. They moved the chains. Minute 46 to go. goes way back to the 44 and Bill Goldberg second sack of the afternoon just when the Bulldogs needed it most Bill Goldberg the man that the Billy Brewer referred to last year as a kind of a street fighter gets it done Darnell leaping grab by Coleman barely tripped up at the 37 Makes you wonder if Ole Miss might not wanted to have gone to him a little more earlier. Not that he was always open, but he can sure grab the ball. Excellent hands by Pat Coleman. Timeout called by Ole Miss with a minute 13 remaining in the game, and Georgia leading it by three. Atra Plus System and Gillette Foamy Shave Cream. Together, the best a man can get. Well, it's down to the short straws. 13 to 10, Georgia leading. Minute 13 to go. And it's third down eight at the 37 of Georgia. The Georgia's, in offensive terms, dominated this game in the second half, but they haven't come out with the big points. It's just been six points they've been able to put on the board, and although they've been in control, this game could slide away from them here. Darnell with an audible up there at the line of scrimmage, taking his time. Five seconds to go on that game by the play clock before he got the stamp underway. Under a lot of pressure, he's going to tuck it up and run it. He'll get the first down. He'll get more. And out of bounds at the 19-yard line. Darnell with the biggest play of the day. In terms of a crucial situation, the 19-yard run when nothing was there. Georgia secondary running with their receivers, man-to-man, -man, locked in underneath. Darnell runs away from Goldberg. Lewis can't close in time. Comes up with a big, critical scramble. Minute three to go in this game. Georgia leads it by three. Ole Miss first down. The Bulldogs 19. Darnell just pops it out here to Baldwin. Baldwin to the 14 yard line, maybe the 13 and a half. He was hit by George Brewer. A good hustle by Brewer getting back into that play. Baldwin about to break it back inside. Here's where you like to have veterans on your defense. People that can turn around to those youngsters and say, hey, come up with a play. Somebody's going to make a play here. No huddle, second down four, clock running. You see it in the bottom right, 36 seconds. Darnell locks it into the end zone, lead high. Touchdown, Ole Let's 
lead. And now the point after by Hogue is good, and Ole Miss leads 17 to 13. send you for a Bud Light, and you bring back... Well, if you want the one light that outshines them all, ask for Bud Light. So, there are no men here, there's an unlimited supply of Bud Light, and we can never leave. Correct. Because everything else is just a light. We can live with that. Yeah. It's wide open spaces leading straight to the sun. Your spirit is soaring with you. The great American run belongs to you. And it's the promise of freedom. You can feel it inside on a road that leads to your dreams. Oh, the great American run belongs to Buick. Reed Hines, the senior from Milton, Florida, had been quiet all day. Did not have a catch until then. It's his first touchdown catch of the year. A beautifully thrown ball, Tim. Perfect throw by John Darnell, and we had talked in this last drive that they would find Al Jackson, that they'd work on that ex inexperience. But Al Jackson was in beautiful position, an excellent play on the ball, but just perfectly thrown. Nothing you can do here. Get your head around, he does, gets his arm up. Reed Hines, good concentration, touchdown Ole Miss. Darnell got the 19-yard run, the critical 19-yard run for the first down. Then made the beautiful pass, finds the catch. Georgia now trails by four with 31 seconds left. Brian Lee kicks it into the end zone. Georgia will just down it there. No time lost on the clock. They'll bring it out to the 20. 80 yards away, Georgia has to have the touchdown. Look at the... Well, it says it all right there, Ray Goff. It all started with a toss from Greg Talley to Brian Cleveland that was mishandled. Old Miss comes up with the football. Chris Mitchell recovers the football. And then a couple of passes to Coleman, a big scramble, and then the beautiful throw by John Darnell. Oh, how fortunes change. Billy Brewer saw the game slipping away. And now Goff sees it slipping away. Over the middle to Hampton. Wanted to get outside, but there were three Ole Miss Rebel defenders to beat, and Pete Harris leveled him at about the 28-yard line. You see Hampton in the open field with the ball. You still have to hold your breath if you're an Ole Miss fan. 22 seconds left. Timeout Bulldogs. What a game. Ole Miss started 10 to nothing. Then Georgia chipped away, chipped away. And dominated the, the third quarter. Offensively, uh, Ole Miss was slate. They had, they had gone down. Georgia came in with five defensive backs and shut down their attack. But when they had to have it, the defense came up with the turnover, and then the offense made something out of it. They made that turnover count. Well, Billy Brewer hoping to snap his two-game losing streak. There's that scoring drive. Eight plays, 64 yards. Only took a minute 52. 13-yard pass for the touchdown, but it was the 19-yard scramble by Darnell that made the difference. Ray Goff was the quarterback here in 1976 when Ole Miss last beat Georgia in Oxford. We we're talking about two losses in a row. The last time Georgia lost three in a row was the last three games of the 84 season. Georgia only lost three in a row under Dooley five times in 25 years. But Ray knew he had a young team, and this not, should not surprise a lot of people that are hard Georgia fans. You hate to lose, but got a very young, inexperienced football team. Tally to Hampton out of bounds, stopping the clock. 17 seconds left. They're out to the 36-yard line. Not time for more than about three more plays if they happen very fast. You know, you take Hampton out of the game there, the end of the fourth quarter, thinking that he's done his job. Okay, I came in and we bailed it out. Now let's get him out of there. Get him out of there so he doesn't get hurt. And then the fumble yeah. from the man who came in to replace him on the next play. Six defensive backs in there for Ole Miss. This is first down Georgia for 36. Well, Robert Henry uh, got to be happy with the way his defense has played and We'll come back with the conclusion in a minute.
shot You're looking good You've come so far And we know how to make The most of who you are Father to son It's what we've always done Gillette The Gillette Atra Plus system and Gillette Foamy Shave Cream Together the best a man can get seconds to go. Georgia at the 36 of Ole Miss, trailing by four. Tally, right over the middle. He has Hummings open to the 39. Clock down to 10 seconds. It stops there because it's a first down, a gain of 25. Georgia with time for a couple, maybe three more plays. That play took seven seconds. There are 10 remaining. Now Georgia uses their final timeout. Ray Goff trying to get his Georgia football team up to the line of scrimmage. The clock stops, they're moving the chain, you snap the ball, and now you, and you still have a timeout left, so you wouldn't necessarily have to go to the end zone with your next play. And now with no timeouts remaining, the only pass you can throw really is either into the end zone or on the, uh, on the perimeter. Throw that deep uh, post corner pattern. Ole Miss bringing its defense to the sideline. And those coaches that we talked about just before the commercial, uh, Robert Henry and Chuck Greenback, they've got to be real happy, happy with the way that their team has played. Art Tuff, an outside linebacker coach, I mean, to come back from giving up 62 points and just a total humiliation of that experience to be competitive here this afternoon is something. Georgia first down at the 39 of Ole Miss. Deep drop for Tally, taking it upstairs. Kirk Warner can't get to it. Godwin intercepts. Chauncey Godwin is knocked down at the 23. And the time runs out. Ole Miss has pulled out a come-from-behind win over Georgia 17 to 13. Tonight, when a town goes bad, he was hired to bring back justice. But when he tries to take control, the town fights back. Chris Christopherson, Chan Michael Vincent, Vigilante Force, 805 Eastern on TBS. Tonight, there's a special breed of people who do battle day after day. Their arena, the business world. Their territory, the road. They are the road warriors. Right? Ray Cave. On the road again, huh? Three cities this week. Hey, Mary Hansen, sales director for Land. Hi. And Howard Johnson is the place the road warrior chooses when he gets ready for the road. Again and again. Howard Johnson, home of the road warrior. This fall, Turner Sports gives you more slams, more magic, and more drives than ever before. This fall, NBA Tuesday and Friday on TNT. And let's go to the hoop of the Hawks on TBS. This fall, the place to be for explosive NBA action is Turner Sports. At Vic, we sympathize with the ways that you pull and stretch your face in search of a better shave. That's why we've created the Big Metal Shaver. The patented Big Metal stretches and smooths your skin thanks to its unique metal guard bar. So the shaver glides closely and comfortably. So instead of stretching, start reaching for a Big Metal Shaver. It stretches your skin for a better shave. And that's no stretch. Ole Miss wins at 17-13. Tim Foley, interesting game. They get out front 10 to nothing. Georgia chips away, and then after Darnell hits a deep slump, comes back with two critical big plays to steal the game. The scramble and the throw is just excellent, and it's a sign of a 
the, de the defense, Ole Miss defense, holding their offense in while they recompose themselves. And Georgia just hammered away, beating them to death, but not killing them, not putting them out, not knocking them dead, and left them with enough life to come back and win the football game. So. Just